Welcome back, boys. First one of the year. Yay. Hooray. Um, and we've got our dear friend, Sally, who's returned. Hello. Back again. Yes. Let's go. Which is cool, actually, because this is all you two. You basically said we're on holiday and you said, fuck it, when we go back, let's let's go again. Like, let's just do it again. So It's just fun, bro. Like, I like it doing is. different things in life. And, like, I connect with you guys. I see you guys again. Like, and it's something for your podcast. It's something for, like, my enjoyment. Like, we had yeah. – have good conversations and I'm, I'm always seeking out good conversations. Yeah, 100%. Fucking nice. 100%. <laughs> well, let's start first because the last time you were on, uh, we went down the rabbit hole so much. I forgot. We didn't even talk about Heal My Health. Like not much at all. We immediately went down yeah, the Yeah, we just started hole. talking about <laughs> fucking mushrooms and fucking shit like that. So Death and spirituality yeah. and DMT. <laughs> so let's talk about that. So how, how did you, when did you start it? What made you want to start? heal my health in the first place and why health and nutrition for you yeah it's weird i kind of had like the business side of me started before i knew where i wanted a business to go i knew i always knew that i wanted to work for myself um and i started learning about business did like a business seminar all that kind of stuff and i loved food like it was two separate things like i just Mm. loved cooking at home i loved food I went through phases of like being vegan, vegetarian, having to learn how to like cook a bunch of different foods. And um, eventually it all just kind of like molded into one. Like my mum, she got sick, um, she had cancer and she was like, you know, combating it through all this food. And so like we went down this like crazy rabbit hole of trying to like heal my mum's cancer. Um, And I went like, she went vegan with me and then we did all these juice cleansers and all this kind of stuff. And like, basically like my whole life I've watched my mum like be sick and I was like kind of had this moment I remember the exact moment I kind of had this moment where I'm like like I want to learn about like health and healing and try and do the best to my body so I never have to do like have it or go through it or get Mm. sick so it was kind of like that pivotal moment I guess when like originally I always wanted to have my own business. I loved food. I mm. even like started doing food photography and stuff like that, realizing I didn't like the photography game. And then, yeah, and then like after, you know, after my mum passed, I was like, that's fucking it. Like I'm studying in this. I'm getting knowledgeable. Mm. I'm going to figure out my shit. And then hopefully I can heal other people as well or prevent people because like my Heal My Health business and what I study is all preventative medicine. Mm. So it's not like you can't cure, you know, diseases – like you can't cure some diseases, you can cure some diseases, whatever. But like, I'm all about like prevention. Like, mm. stop yourself from ever getting to that point in the first yeah. place. So yeah, that's sorry, long story, but I know. it all molded into one. So eventually, yeah. like when I started studying, I was like, okay, like I know I want to work for myself. I can go work for a clinic or whatever else, but I can actually just do my own business in this and heal people along the way, heal myself, prevent disease as much as possible around me mm. in whatever way I can. So that's where it yeah. all kind of came from. It's it's crazy too because our our cousin Neros is big on the food as well. Mm. Like so, and it, uh, it's kind of it makes all like it makes sense. Like if you basically like example, so there's people, you are what you eat. Yeah, <laughs> there's people out there who just feed their bodies with horrible stuff. And like obviously, I'm not saying I'm the fucking I'm like I don't eat healthy and stuff. But like, there's some people out there though that just trash their bodies. And it's and, it, and it's not just from like even drinking and stuff. It's just from the food. And I think people don't realize how um, bad bad food is for you. Like yeah. How shit it is for your insides. Maybe not your outside. You look the, the same, but your insides are like dying. Yeah. Like you, it's fucking that's scary shit, man. Well, there's a like there's a quote that I saw not long ago that was like every time you eat, you either feed disease or you prevent it. Um, mm-hmm. and it's like. I, I really believe that, like, you know, I, I'm i not the, like, cleanest, most perfect kind of eater, but I also believe that there's, like, humanity in it and there's, like, personality in it and all that kind of stuff. You've got to live your life and have fun. But there is, like, food that can harm you. Obviously, your, like, bad foods, all that kind of stuff is going to harm you. But it's also, like, if you're missing out on certain foods, like, if you don't eat any orange, yellow, red food or whatever, you're missing out on certain vitamins and minerals that might affect your liver or your brain or something like that where it's not just about like oh I don't eat fast food or junk food or whatever it's also about like what kind of food you are putting in your body and if you're eating the same food so it's been just so interesting to me to dive so deep because the rabbit hole is so so deep like 
the first subjects you do in a like nutrition degree is like human biology, chemistry, biochemistry, like you're learning like on the molecular level of what foods are made up from chemically and then like what that does to your body. Wow, yeah. So it's like it's a really it's, yeah, so you you fully know like holy shit what the food's doing to the your insides. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it's fun. it's mental. Like we even have like preservatives in food that mimic like estrogen as a hormone. So when you like when women eat it they can get like estrogen dominance and then they get yeah. all these like female reproductive problems and stuff like wow. that so it's just the way that the food industry is and the like the chemicals they've created to go in food do so much crazy shit to our body that we don't even have any idea that it's doing so when people come to me like if a woman comes to me and she has PCOS or like if you know someone comes to me they have heart problems like you kind of analyze the food that they're eating what's in it like wow. what kind of pesticides are being used all that kind of stuff and see what you can take out and what you can put in so it's yeah, it's sure. a it's a whole fucking realm but i like i've enjoyed it i really enjoy the human body i really enjoy like chemistry and shit i'm a mm. bit of a like i'm a bit of a chemistry nerd when it comes mm. to it like year 11 year 12 i was doing physics chemistry biology like just love love the shit. I love anything that goes like so far deep that is beyond our kind of realm of existence. Yeah, wow. But it's it's like, can be toxic now because I look at, like I say this to James all the time, if I'm out eating dinner or whatever, I'm looking at my food and my head is like doing all this like, <laughs> yeah. shit around like, me. Like, what's in this shit? What the fuck am I going to eat? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. They should really teach me um, a lot of that in school. Like, just yeah. the basics of the fact that like you can have, if you're not eating enough reds or yellows or whatever, that you're not missing out. I feel like that's something important. Yeah, that people should know, you know, and it's crazy that, like, you go into Woolies and you look at the shelf and there's all this shit they're selling, but no one knows what's in it. Like, no one reads the back of the packet. No one really yeah. knows what they're ingesting, you know what I mean? Mm. And I think they should really do, like, a basic food course or something in school. <laughs> why, isn't, why isn't this all originally taught in school? There's so much they got to teach in like, school. Like, why, why? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Like, they, why? Like, I guess they try and do the basics, but it's it's pretty, like, I'm on my third year nearly finished and I've only scratched the surface. Like, but I still yeah. feel like I'm so unable to, like, I feel like what you're doing now would be the basics, and even at school, we weren't even getting taught basics. Yeah. Like, we were getting taught fuck all. Either <laughs> yeah. that or just because I wasn't there half the time. But, like... You had a giraffe puppet in a van telling you like, not what? to drive. Like, <laughs> like, what the, like, what the fuck did I learn? Like, n like nothing. Wait, do you remember, like, like thinking Healthy Harold was real? Well, did that, you guys have fucking, Healthy Harold? There's a fucking giraffe. I yeah. don't yeah. remember. Everyone talks about it, but I don't remember that. I don't think I, I don't, ever had that I don't. I don't remember him coming... I can't remember if he came to St. Clair specifically, maybe Claregate when I was in primary. I don't maybe. even remember primary. I don't remember the giraffe. But I 100% remember that every cunt had the giraffe. Yeah. I must have. The one I, that used to tell you not to smoke cigarettes. And, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, all yeah. like drug um, yeah. kind of stuff. But Drugs I, are bad. I yeah. remember thinking like, not maybe like a year ago, I was like, what happened to Healthy Harold? I wonder if it's still around. And legit, that week, I saw the Healthy Harold band driving past <laughs> and I was like, get out, no way, he's still going. Holy shit. But I remember the moment in year five yeah. or year six where he came back, because like, you have them in like kindergarten or year one or whatever, you're still like a little kid and a little giraffe pops out, and I'm like, oh, crazy, like giraffe. Mm. And then, <laughs> it's a real giraffe. And then like year five, year six, when you have to sit in it and she like pops this, like she sticks her hand in the back of the like van mm. wall and then out the other side of this little hole comes yeah. this like puppet giraffe. And I just remember going, fuck it. Fuck this shit. Like, <laughs> what is going on? They like, lied. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do drugs now. <laughs> I don't remember that. Man, yeah, nah, fuck. So, we, we, how is the the heal my health going? So, at the moment, just studying, doing your podcast. Um, but how do you want to take that into a business side? Do you want to start maybe what selling like recipes, selling advice, selling f food like um. Like what is it when you give people food plans? Yeah, like is that yeah, the like kind? Of, plan is that the idea? Yeah. Um, it's like I, I want to work with clients because that will help me learn a lot. Uh, mm. When I see a client, I get like a registration form of what's going on with them and then I dive into research and figure out what I can do. And then I like obviously talk to them and figure out their stuff. So it helps me learn, but eventually I want to do more like workshops, seminars, uh, retreats, mm. things like that. So I really, I did a Heal My Gut talk um, a year or two ago now where it was like 10 people and it was mm. just all about the gut. And it was really interesting the kind of reciprocation mm. level that I got from it. Like so many people have gut issues 
and I had a couple of people come, I had no idea who they were, like a couple of women, which was beautiful. Um, and I really want to work in that space where I can mm -hmm. kind of go, like there's one-on-one, -on -one, which is client-based, which is awesome. You can really help people that way. But for me, I think it would be a little bit unsustainable with the time mm -hmm. um, and the return in terms of like business sense, I guess, whatever. But like, I really want to help people in that way of like one-to-many where I can do like, you know, 50 people retreats where we just learn exactly what you said you didn't learn the basics at school so like mm -hmm. learn the basics learn the food groups learn what you can add in like and just have a environment for a bunch of people to be able to share it mm -hmm. together and leave with a lot of more like education and knowledge so I want to do that stuff I really enjoy talking in front of people mm -hmm. I really enjoy giving information that way and creating a space for people to talk about their stuff like in that way. I think the retreat's a fucking awesome idea, mm. Mm. but obviously you would have to spend a little bit, right? You'd have to, find, say example, you house five, ten clients, because you, your first one would be small, I'd assume. Yeah. Maybe five clients, and then you need a place to go, a place where they can sleep the night, and then what, you, like, you, you can show them how to cook food, you just cook healthy food, you, show, like, you can teach them what's bad, what's the good stuff in this food, what's the shit stuff in that food. I think that's a fucking sick idea. Mm, but yeah. you'd have to spend money to make money there. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like it would, um, yeah, it would be a matter of like I don't, I don't know mm. necessarily how it works yet. I have a lot of friends that have done it, so I can like get information from them. But really, man, like I'm not all about like becoming super rich off this. Like this yeah, is just yeah. a way that I. I, you know, I've watched disease, like disease my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I can stop anyone having to do that or go through that, and like at the moment, you know, I'm in the process of, you know, keeping, steering my dad away from disease, you know, he's going through like pre-diabetes, things like that. Mm. So I'm like, sweet, your daughter literally works in this industry. I yeah. can help. And I'm seeing the change in him and it's beautiful to see. And yeah. I see the change in myself because I've had gut issues my whole life mm. and now I've like pretty much cured myself. And it's like awesome for me. And I just, if I can stop people from going through and seeing what I've like seen in my, like, you know, with my mum and stuff like that, if I can do like preventative cancer work, then awesome. Like, but that's, that would be the main thing for me. And like, obviously I have to make a living and that's fine. Um, but I'm not like looking to get super rich or yeah. whatever. Like if I can run a retreat and I can make enough for me to live for the week, for the mm. two weeks, for the four weeks, like whatever. Like That's I'm just mad, about yeah. kind of like living in my like passion, living in my truth. And the only way I can do that is working for myself and working in the like health industry. Have you I struggle uh, to work with people. Sorry, <laughs> have you um, thought of writing a book? Yeah, I will one day. Mm, I yeah, will. that could be a great, That's a great idea. idea, yeah. Yeah, I definitely will do that. So it's gonna be like a lot of different areas I can see yeah. with my work like it'll come in different aspects of you know a book or an online course like I definitely want to do like a gut healing course um, and you know I, I am a lot in the gut because it's what I've studied to heal myself so I know a lot of it now but there's other areas that I'd like to go into hormonal and stuff like that where I can sell courses I can sell books I can sell retreats I can do one-on-one -on -one work so it'll be a lot of different like areas you know what I mean yeah, but what what about with the uni stuff? Is that is that packed? Like, is there a lot of students um, or? Yeah, it's intense. It's, yeah, it is like the the college that I go to. Um, it's more intensive than some unis. So most unis have like four subjects a semester. Mm -hmm. I've had ones where I have like six subjects a semester, and oh, they're literally wow. called like nutritional biochemical, like nutritional biochemistry, um, like digital physiology research and like shit like that and there's like six subjects in 13 weeks and I have like 40 assignments like it's holy fully, fuck it's wrecked me wow. I've had multiple multiple breakdowns but yeah. I'm like I'm so close to the finish line yeah. and this semester I only have three subjects to finish off and none of them like I've done all the biochemistry work now I've done all the food work so this time I've only got like a business one a communication one like just working with people I guess and then I'm just working for the clinic as like a student practitioner so I'm taking clients at the moment um, yeah, 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 yeah. and just working with them like it's unpaid it's just kind of like work experience yeah but it's been a it's been a ride and a half like how long has it been two years uh, two and a half now so wow. I'll finish when I finish in June if I do um, it'll be 
three years exactly. Holy shit, man, that is fucking crazy. So, but you've gone through the worst of it. Yeah, yeah I've definitely like gone through the, the worst of it. Part. Now it's just kind of like combining stretch, like, everything. Yeah, but it's like, weird. It's weird when you work with people with food because it's, you you don't realize how like deeply rooted ideas and structure is around food and how much people like have control, like find control in what they eat. So like when they come to you, like they have this problem, but like food is like habitual and it's like trained in you from like a kid, you know, you're either like told to sit down and eat your food and not leave the table mm. or you have to eat this or your parents have just taught you a certain way of eating yeah. and like that's just what you know. So it's literally like a huge part of my job is actually psychological, like yeah. making, mm. helping people make change. Because people know what to do. Yeah. You kind of know what, you, like, what's good and what's not. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and I think that's where like nutrition is kind of. People don't really see the depth of it because you're like, yeah, there's good food, there's bad food. Like, I get it. But it's yeah. also like psychological change, lifestyle change. It's like, what are you actually intaking? And like, it's a whole ball game of like a bunch of different areas coming into one. I've never thought of it about but like that. Hey, that's so true. Like when you're a kid. Like, your parents, are, like, there's parents out there that don't let the kids leave the table till all the veggies are done. And the kid's sitting there, like, crying, I fucking hate tomatoes, all this shit, and then... But then there's other parents who just probably don't give a fuck, and then... Or what it, there's probably... I can probably guess there's a lot of families out there that where the parents just bring the food to the kid's room. Yeah. And the kid just eats in the room, like, everyone's just... So, yeah, maybe that shit can then sort of goes down the line, and then you get older, and then you're eating, like, shit, or you're eating good, or... Right. Yeah. Like, forcing your kid to eat sh peas, like, you can have fucking PTSD from that shit, bro, and never want to eat that, like, it, you can fuck someone up doing that, <laughs> you know, like, they would never eat that food again, like, yeah. they won't. You can, I've seen it, like, I've seen, like, grown adults that the only way, like, the, such a huge part of control for them is not eating, because, like, they oh, yeah. would either, like, yell at or force, like, uh, there's people out there that use food as kind of like a, a power stance and adults can do that, you know what I mean? They want to get angry or they want to do this, like they just yell at the kid for not eating or they're frustrated, whatever, like you're only, it's hard to figure out everything as a parent, but like you might get frustrated because you've slaved over a dinner and your kid's not eating it, but like eating like food patterns of kids is so different and when this kid's getting abused and like mm. I've even, you know, the seen in different families or when I've been out to dinner or whatever where this kid's like having a full tantrum crying like a full PTSD moment mm. with the like parents yelling at them and it's based on food so then yeah, there's like wow. a fear thing put in about food and like when you think about growing up with certain you know triggers or certain things that like in your brain you just click onto and then you decide well you know what I control my food now because I'm an adult and I don't have to eat or I can eat as much as I want and I'm going to binge eat all the time like yeah. there's a real psychological aspect to it yeah fuck oh, man I never thought of it like that well, how many people so, have like ridiculous diabetes and are obese and can't make the change like their health mm. is like fully like you're going to die soon if you don't lose weight and they can't do it yeah. Like, it's because it's so, their patterns are so deeply ingrained, it's really interesting. It's like an addiction. Yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. People have yeah. to literally break out of these fucking oh, habits. Of habits and, but then again, that all comes down to everyone being comfortable with what they're doing. Mm. And what they they know, like people, we said this with the, in, with the Moby, the last fire, fire cast with Moby, like people, comfortability is so dangerous for a human. So dangerous, bro. People don't want to make change. People don't want to try this. People don't want to do that. Next thing you know, you're fucking 65 years old and you're stuck in the same job you hate and you, your insides are trashed. Yeah, that's what like, I was just saying like, to you about yeah. like the shit that you're doing online. Like, if you don't, mm. like, if you, you, you can sit and you can hear about things, different ways to make money or different things like to try or like, mm. oh, I heard this. Even like, you know, even if it's a restaurant, I heard this restaurant's really good, but then when it's time to come to go out to dinner, you just go to the same place. You go to McDonald's, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's just safe, right? Yeah. But like, Fuck. if you don't, like, and that's why I jumped at the opportunity when, like, we mentioned doing this podcast first. Like, yeah. this was the first podcast I'd ever done. I'd never been on one before. Yeah. But if I get the opportunity to put myself out of my comfort zone, like, I will do my best to do it. Yeah. Because Fuck it's yeah, like, you do, yeah. Yeah. because you learn. Should. Yeah. It's a learning process. But when you stay in your comfort, like, you don't, you don't grow. You're not expanding See, your mind. It's weird, like you can also put it down. So you know when you, you change jobs, right? You quit and you, you move on and you finally bite the bullet. Um, how, how nervous are you, right? 
when you go to that job interview. All right? How nervous are you your first day when you get the job? But I, I used to say this to Chloe all the time, right? Like, that feeling to me was kind of like, I was kind of addicted to it. Like, that scared feeling. Like, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Finally, something is happening here. Something exciting. Because like I said, I've had so many fucking jobs now, but and she, and Chloe would always say, oh, are you nervous? Are you nervous for the interview? I'm like, yeah, but like, I kind of can't wait to get there. And I like, just start talking shit and meeting people and shit like that. But most people hate that feeling. So they just stick to what they know. It's fucking crazy, man. I feel like, like they hate it because they never like put themselves past that feeling. Because like we've all done it, like the three of us, where like you're nervous or whatever. Mm. But then afterwards, like and when you start getting into it, like the first time I was on this podcast, shaky as in my voice, mm. not knowing like mm. like he was sketchy. But then ten minutes later, something it's hectic good, is like, happening. Yeah. You know what I mean, and same thing. You get the you go to the job interview. You're like, oh, new job, I'm nervous, and then you get the job or you don't or whatever, mm. and the interview went fine. But like. Either way, you come out on the other side, okay. Yeah. Most people think, like, if you feel nervous, you can die. Like, yeah, well, I mean, you can sort of, um, it's the same with skydiving. You've been skydiving, eh? Yeah. How fucking scary was it? That was, that was a pivotal moment for me in my life, man. Like, that, that morning when we were doing the brief, man, I don't bite my nails, I bit down every nail to the bone. I was like a cartoon going... Like that, and I was so fucking scared. And we got up into the plane, man. And there's a rickety ass tin can plane, it's shaking and shit. And there's a sign on the door. Literally, you're looking at the sign. Oh, if the plane goes down, just listen to your instructor. So these cunts just practice jumping out in case the plane crashes or whatever. I'm going, holy fuck, what okay. have I done? If a plane would crash, you'd want it to be while you're skydiving. While you're skydiving, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm like, fuck, man, what the fuck have I done? I'm literally going to die. I'm literally going to be that guy on the news that has the accident with the parachute and all this shit. And I'm going, fuck, 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 I'm panicking. And i got my mate, one of my mates, Cody, he's sitting in front of me. And me and him, the two dickheads, didn't realise that, obviously, if you get on the plane last, you're going to be first to jump because you're sitting at the front of the plane. So you get on the plane and then you all make your way to the back. And me and this kind of sitting at the front of the plane. And then the instructor, the instructor turns and goes... All right, he's jumping first. And I went, oh, yeah, so who's second? Fuck. I'm fucking second. And then, bro, Cody's face, man, he just went white like a ghost. And I was like, oh, my God. And the next thing you know, they're gone. They were just out. And, man, oh, <laughs> that feeling, bro, he brings me out to the plane. And I was fucking literally going, holy shit, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And we jumped. Bro, I started having a panic attack. Mid-air. I swear to God, I was falling. And I was going, <laughs> And I fought for some reason I couldn't breathe. And the guy's going, Brad, it's all good, Brad, just breathe, just breathe. I'm going, I can't, I can't. I'm going, Aah. and I went, oh, wait a second. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. And then we're just flown through the clouds and shit, bro. But that lead up, man, was so fucking scary. And then afterwards, man, I was so, I was so glad that, like, I went through with it. Like, it was fucking so good. And that was me breaking comfortability to its ultimate level. Like that it ends was, up being one of the best experiences. Bro, ever. that shit was so fucking scary. Mind you, I still hate flying to this day. Like I hate tra like, I hate travelling just for the flying. I'm a nervous flyer, eh? Yeah. I, I literally hate I'm it. Bro. I like planes, bro. I like uh, the airport and shit. You're walking through the airport and that cool. I, the plane. But not too long though. Short trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well we did it for what? How long was America? Like fourteen hours or something? Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, the first no. the can I tell the story no. of the first plane trip that I got on? Because mm. cool. I accidentally, like fully accidentally ended up travelling alone for the first time. I was supposed to meet my friend in Croatia and then she like a week out before the trip she said, Oh, I can't come for like the first four days. So I was like What the fuck? <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs> right. like, yeah. So I literally, and I didn't even think about it until like maybe like two days later, where I was like, "What? What the fuck am I going to do?" And this is what's crazy. Like I just thank the universe for it because now obviously I've done so much solo travel, um, and it like was an accident having that happen yeah. first of all. But anyways, so I'm on this plane. It's the first plane I've ever been on that isn't like one hour, twelve years old to Queensland or something with my mum. It's a fourteen hour flight. I get on there, whatever, sit down, and I've got this Greek lady next to me, this old Greek lady and her husband. 
And I swear to God, to this day, like I've been on so many flights, and there has never been a flight more fucked up for turbulence oh, than that first flight. Like, no. I, I reckon if I were to survive that, like, I don't even know how I ever got on <laughs> the plane again. Because we're halfway through, it's like seven hours in, and the plane, like, you know, goes on, the seatbelts on, there might be experiencing some turbulence. Yeah. Yeah. Like and this huge plane, like, it was one of those, like, obviously it's a 14 hour one, so it's a huge one. Yeah. And it was a shaking, like it was like really? fully shaking for ages. And this Greek woman next to me, right, she's probably like 60, she's grabbing onto my arm <laughs> and she's yelling in Greek. You know, no. she's literally yelling in Greek, crying. And I'm grabbing her hand and I'm crying. And her husband's just going, <laughs> patting her lap. <laughs> And oh. she's just looking at me with like pure terror yeah. and I thought I'm gonna die next this to this is Greek it. lady. This is it. I'm, fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna what? die on this plane next to this Greek lady yelling at me in a language I don't yeah. know. Fuck <laughs> man. Uh, and it was just terrifying. But that's the worst too. When, uh, oh, that'd be the uh, thank I've been on some shaky planes but never enough where when people start fucking praying, that's when you know there's a lot of people, Oh, baby Jesus, please stop this plane from shaking. See, that, that's not going to help anybody. <laughs> like, that's not helping anybody. When I was, um, like, when I went to Everest, we had the flight to Lukla, which is, like, literally classified as the most dangerous flight in the world. Like, oh, it's, really? I've seen a video on Wait, online. what? Yeah. So wait, wait where's that from? From Kathmandu in India. Oh, uh, in Nepal. It's the base camp to the, to the to base camp of the Everest. You so gotta, there's you've, one specific flight you got to do. It's like dangerous as fuck. Oh, yeah, really? it's like cool. where the most planes go down out of the oh whole my God. entire world. And you did that? Yeah, well, I have to. Oh, like, if you want to do, shit. if you want to do Everest, you yeah. have to. Like, there's it's no the other... highest altitude airport, so only one. You wow. Can go to, to the base camp. Yeah. Wow. So, so we get there, right? Like, obviously, everyone's like shitting themselves. We finally land. Whatever. I'm like, thank God, I'm safe. I get out of the plane and I look over and there's a crashed plane like to the oh left of me oh my like, god Holy up shit. on this like hill thing and really? i said to my guide i was like what what the fuck is what that is that there and yeah. what happened he's like oh it was three days ago the pilot was drunk after new year's because they had nepali new year oh my and god and nepali new year went off like yeah. it was mental it was like year 7602 or some shit like that yeah. i don't know it was like ridiculous but yeah he was like oh the like the pilot was drunk i was like did anyone die he's like yeah two people died what? Get me the fuck out of here! Yeah, like, I don't want to do it with no more, man. But I'm like, it's a dangerous airport because it's the most highest altitude. Mm. But this plane crashed because the pilot was drunk. Yeah, that's <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> That is... And he told you as well. He didn't lie about it, he just told you, straight up told you. And that's the third world country for you, but really. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no regulations on it. So I don't get it. How long's the flight from wherever the fuck? So it flies you to the base of the camp, of that mountain. Is that what? It's a short flight, isn't it? It's yeah, just it's you like, land in, in, in Nepal, don't you? But then you go from there, or...? Yeah, it's like 30 minutes. So oh, you okay. leave from Kathmandu, um, mm. like, in Nepal, and then, yeah, and then you just get to the bottom of, like, the Himalayas. So you just get to a place oh. in the Himalayas, and then you you start your trek from the airport to go to Everest Base. Huh. It, it, why is it so dangerous? Is it just because of, like, do you, are you, like, flying through mountains and shit, or is it just because of the altitude problem? I think it's just because of the altitude Turbulence, problems. I think. I think it's, like, oh. bad, like, shit like that. Well, so Probably their planes aren't that great either. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's like the little those, dingy ones. Yeah. yeah, the little dingy ones. Holy fuck. That's fucking bad. Yeah. Planes are terrifying, man. And to jump out of one, like, it just defies all logic in your brain. Well, that's like, why, yeah, that's why I don't understand. Like, I'd rather jump out of the planes than sit in them. Like, a bit, like, bro, like, on the, was it the, oh, which flight was it? Was it the American trip where I, we went together? Was it, I think it was that one. Mm. That first trip, no, sorry, it was the second time I went with all the boys and Chloe. That second trip, bro, we, I can't remember if it was on the way there or on the way back. I think it might have been the way there, where it was it, same thing as a big ass plane. It's a fourteen hour, thirteen hour straight run to Texas, right? And that's the thing I hate about the flying, right? Is because the first, yeah, like you said, like the first seven, eight hours usually go great, but it's like you get to this one patch of American sky and it's just fucking so turbulent, bro. And we were going and everyone was asleep. It was like the the lights were off in the cabin and shit. Everyone was asleep, and um, all of a sudden. The plane just starts shaking, and it, it was shaking that much that it woke everyone up, and that the the pilot then like sort of come on, okay, yeah, seatbelts on, and then I, I was like, what the fuck? 
and I'm looking around and the flight attendants were fucking and that's when I was like okay fuck okay that is fucking freaky because you, you know usually it's like what James said on the holiday you always look at the flight attendant if they're still walking around and ha ha laughing okay whatever yeah. but these guys were buckled in as well <laughs> and I'm going fuck me I'm it. going fuck and then everyone wakes up everyone's putting their seatbelts on Chloe starts crying the plane's shaking I look up and I remember I just see Diamond one of my mates sitting a couple rows in front and he just did this he just went <laughs> and he just looked at me with this face like okay and I was like because he's like the most calm one out of all my mates. So I'm like, okay, if he's freaking out, I start freaking out. But I was so, ask Chloe, I was so scared. I started twitching. Like I was doing this, or like she was holding my hand and I was going like that. I was twitching. I was so fucking terrified, bro. And I was literally twitching. And mind you, all the fucking sleeping pills we tried to take to help us sleep. Now at this point, I'm like fucking off me head on all these sleeping pills and I'm twitching and shit. I'm so fucking scared. And I was like, holy fuck. And then because I was scared, Chloe was getting more scared. And this shit was happening for like ages. Yeah. Like 40 minutes, 45 minutes of just straight, I'm about to die any second. And then it just goes away and, got the, the, and then the seatbelt lights turn off. And everyone back to sleep. It's, I mean, and then the rest of my flight's fucked then. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm sweating. I can, t <laughs> I, I can smell myself because I'm, I'm sweating that hard and shit. I've still got five hours to go. I'm like, fuck this shit, man. That's, that's the thing with planes. Like, like goes, you look at that thing, how is that fucking thing in the sky for so long? Yeah. Hours on end? That's I don't like, get it. I don't get it. It is better to jump out of one, you get it over yeah. and done with quickly, <laughs> instead of sitting there in fucking so high up for so long. But I've, I've, I've looked it up so many times before, and apparently though, like, if this makes anyone feel better, the plane, when it gets turbulence, it literally doesn't affect the plane at all. Mm. Apparently, like on the outs, on the inside you're shaking, but on the outside the plane's just going like that. It's chilling. It's just gliding, and the the best way someone like described it on this Reddit post that I read is they said it's basically picture when you're on a boat, right? You're on a boat, and when the boat gets a bit of rocky water, yeah, it rocks a little bit, but it's fine. Yeah. And you don't get that scared on a boat. Like I mean, I haven't been in crazy like swells and shit, but I'm I'm always like, yeah, you're right, like because. I've been to Thailand and shit, and there's heaps, all heaps of boat travel, and yeah, you get some choppy waters, but yeah, never to the point where I'm so scared I'm twitching and shit. But for some reason, it's the same thing with the plane, like being on the ground though. Yeah, and you're fucking fifty thousand feet in the air, but yeah, this I don't know apparently the turbulence does nothing at all to the plane. Wait, I have a question. Like, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is one way that you're gonna get out of your comfort zone this year? I think that's a great question and I've been thinking a lot about this in my head like what I'm gonna do for myself this year if um, this is the year I really trying my hardest I want to be able to quit my job and I'm talking about not go back to work nice. <laughs> like that's and that's gonna be very scary because obviously you know you got bills and shit to pay but if example like all that online stuff I'm doing if it works out you know I hope it works out. I want to just, yeah. I want to say goodbye to the nine to five, goodbye to working for someone else. I, I'm, I want to be done with it. That's going to be my main trying to get out of my comfort zone. Because going, like, even for me, going to work is just comfortable. Yeah, it's just an easy nine hundred bucks of the week. I can pay the bills, whatever. But that, I feel like I've always said it. I always go on about it. It's so time consuming for me. It's not even funny. If I didn't have to go to work, man, I would have so much shit done. Yeah. Like, it's insane. That's what I want to try to do this year. You're it's going doing, to be hard. You're always doing, like, you're always um, doing shit, yeah. but when you're at work, you right. can't do the shit that you need to do or want to do to grow. Like, people, this is the thing, right? Like, just because, I always say this to Chloe as well all the time, like, just, like, example, yeah, it's, it might be, to some other people, it might be just computer work. It might just be, oh, okay, yeah, he's making music or he's streaming on Twitch playing games. Or how, how is that? But people don't realize is they're the things that I have to do to try and build a fan base, a community, to be able to stop going to work and survive off this shit and help other people and give money to my family and my friends and shit like that. I need what you have. Like, like you know, the... the it's like more fan base. No, but like, like even just like the effort of putting in all that work. Yeah. Like I need to be able to like like you you have to. And I've said this to James. Yeah. I've changed James's kind of perception mm. on Instagram or 
people like oh, on Instagram or whatever because it, you actually need to have that now. Like yeah, you need yeah, to you have need all the different areas. You need to have the podcast. You need to yeah. have Instagram and stuff like that. Only because like it's just what the world needs now if you're trying to make something right. for yourself and be a business. Like if your name yourself you're gonna be entrepreneurial I yeah. hate that word but like business or Meh. anything that you're making that isn't working for someone else. You actually need to it's have the media. different like yeah, the different aspects of like online presence and yeah. sizing. You gotta be everywhere. You yeah. gotta have you gotta stay eyes everywhere. You gotta stay relevant. But you need the time to be able to do that. So. Exactly right. I and reckon you're gonna get there, bro, because the one thing that they say, like, that heaps of people have written in their books and shit like that about, like, goals or whatever, is that if you have the idea of where you're gonna be, like, it doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't matter how it yeah. changes. Like, you can have your action steps or whatever, but if you have the goal to work for yourself and do your own thing, and it's that passionate, mm -hmm. eventually you will get there. You just like, you be malleable with the way that you get there, and you just try mm -hmm. a bunch of different things and you keep working on it and you keep working on it, and one day it'll be there and you never have to just like don't man. give up. I mean, it's yeah. gonna pay off if you keep going. That's just yeah. the main thing. You just um, keep going. That's what, like, that's that's my main, that's one of my main goals, man. And I know it, it, it kind of sounds like a stretch, but I, I think I can pull it off, man. It's not a stretch, bro. I think I can pull it off. Especially like, now with NFTs and shit. I'm <laughs> it's telling, a I'm, lot easier. I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'll fucking, I'll get there one way or a fucking another. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's, I, I'm trying, and not just that too, like I said, I don't, I don't care about the fame or the money so much. Like, the, because the money, yeah, okay, cool. I might buy myself the nice car and the nice house, but then once I do that, bro, I'm going to be giving half the shit away anyway. I don't, like, once I have a car to get me to point A to point B in a place to live with my girlfriend and all my dogs, <laughs> bro, I'll be giving money to my, to, I'll be giving it to my mum, to my mother-in-law, I'll be giving it away, I'll be giving it to my friends, giving it to fucking charities and shit, like, I don't fucking give a fuck. Like, I love that you say all my dogs. Well, oh, mate. Some coming. The, the, mate, the first thing <laughs> I'm doing, if, if I can make some nice sum, sum of money, first thing I'm doing, another couple dogs. Dash ounce. I'm gonna have like 50 of the cunts. I'm gonna be just running around going crazy. Like, but you know what I mean? I wanna help other people too. That's why I'm so driven to try it and like just because the working right, I've had days, I shit you not, where I get home at 9.30 at night. At night, bro. And I get up at 5 a.m. to go to work. And then these cunts at work, there's no, oh, all right, lads, have tomorrow off or start the next day at 10 o'clock. No, nah, no, nah, it's just like a normal day. It's not, it not, and it, it got. That's why work was so rocky for me towards the end of the year because it got to the point where us, as the crew, the boys, we all got together and we said, "This isn't right." We're, we're like, and we started saying, we told our bosses, our supervisors, we said, "If we're not home by six o'clock, seven o'clock, tomorrow we're not coming in, or tomorrow we're starting later, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. I don't give a fuck. The choice is yours." Oh no, but you can't do that. We're gonna, we can do whatever the fuck we want. Mm. We're not coming to work. And that's why shit started getting so rocky. People started leaving. From like October to December, we lost like six, seven blokes. That's mental hours. My, like, brother, my brother works hours like that sometimes. It's, it's he's now got joke. two kids and it's yeah. like, bro, like, Mate, like how do you get home and I, have dinner and like spend time with your kids if you're working that you get home, many hours? You get home, everyone's asleep, your dinner's cold, if there was even dinner left for you. Dinner's cold. You shower and you're straight in bed to wake up in the next, what, I don't know, 10 hours, 10, 11 hours. People take life too seriously, man. That's like, what I'm saying. And, and, and like at the end of the day, I'm not scared to admit, bro, fuck work. Like as soon as I make one lump sum of money off whatever it is, the music, my crypto, the NFT attempt, anything, anything, I'm telling you, I'm quitting my job. Have you heard yeah. about no. um, that Poland, I think it was Poland recently, I only saw it yesterday, I think. That they're introducing a four-day work week and oh, six-hour work days, and that's going to happen everywhere because you know so. why? These robots. There's going to be a time very soon in the next twenty years where robots are going to start doing everything. Yeah, and they're going to be and people. There's going to have to be universal basic income, and people don't realize that bloke whose whole life is just shoveling shit, and he lives for that, wakes up every day, does the same thing. That's not going to happen anymore, and these people are going to have nothing to do. Yeah. They're gonna lose their mind. Yep. That's why you gotta work on yourself and you gotta find a passion and you gotta do something you love doing. Because your job's not gonna last forever, man. Robots are coming quick, I'm telling you. Mm. Do you guys watch um do you guys watch Queer Up on Netflix? I've seen it, yeah. I've seen it on Queer Up for the straight guy. 
No, uh, oh, the it, reboot. it was an old school queer. Yeah. I used to watch the old movie. one with my mum, I think. Yeah. yeah. So okay. James and I watch it, right? It's the most humble, beautiful show. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's people. Show. It's, it's. I cry every time. Yeah. It's beautiful, bro, and it's just amazing. But anyways, this guy, and like just after what you said, she said like people take life too seriously. So I don't think like people don't take life seriously enough in the way of like mm. actually living their life. Yeah, living. Like, that's what I mean. They you know, just like. exist, bro. Like, yeah. and this guy on like the episode that we watched like last night or the night before, he lost his wife. Mm. His wife like randomly died from a brain aneurysm, and the last thing she said was, "Oh, please keep my restaurant alive. Like, please mm. keep my restaurant going." So. And it's bro, it's so sad. And for twelve years, he's been. Like, all he did was throw himself into this restaurant, but, like, fully let himself go, like, mm. all his hair is growing, he's just, like, you know, wears flip-flops everywhere, whatever, mm. and the restaurant has not changed a bit, like, not one bit in the 12 mm. years. But when the, like, um, when one of the, like, boys was talking to him, he was saying, like, you're not living anything but this restaurant. Like, you just, you know, took your wife's last words and just, like, threw yourself into the, res the restaurant and forgot about your friends, your life, mm. like, anything that you had interest in. And he said, he's like, sometimes um, it's easier to exist than to live. And what? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. I know. And it was so Come sad, on. man. It was so sad. Like, sometimes it's easier to exist than to live. Nah, and, like, nah. some people are just fucking existing. Like, nah, when, they're, when you most. talk about, yeah, most, like, they're just doing the job. Like, going there to the 9 to 5 or the 5 to fucking 9.30. Like, not that you're not living your fucking life. But, like, when you, when you just work and work those hours for someone else and you lose your life. Like, yeah, sense of self. You lose yeah. your sense of self. They're yeah. the people I feel sorry for the most, man. The yeah. ones who don't, like, have a, They literally don't see the value in being alive. And like, that, have to. that's very scary shit to me because, like, yeah, they're the ones I feel sorry for the most, man. The ones the ones that just get home and sit on the couch and watch Netflix and drink a beer. And Bro. They're, 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 like, yeah. Even just but sitting outside, man. Just, just yeah. sit outside and look at the nature around yeah, you. Bro. You're not just an animal on this planet. Just enjoy that. You know what I mean? Like, at least be part of, you know, like, be part of nature. Be part. Don't just sit inside, sucked into TV. Mm. You wake up the next day, you go to work for someone else, you come home, you do the same shit. Like, and you're letting, there's birds flying out and fucking bugs and shit and trees that's going on right outside your wall. You're never gonna see it because you're just yeah. stuck in a fucking, you know, same pattern watching TV. You come home, you put your headphones in, listen to this, do that, go to sleep, wake up, go to work, come back, and you're just letting life pass you by, man. It's fucking scary. Well, the world's spinning around you. Before I forget, what what what's gonna be your I was just about question? To ask, yeah, yeah. that you're gonna well, do to get out of well, your com I've, I've, comfort zone? Well, this year I've, I'm a dad now, man. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, but people don't know yet. Um, Dylan gave birth to triplets. I didn't give birth. But um, they can girlfriend gave yeah, birth. They, yeah, Dylan gave birth to um, triplets. To a little girl. And um yeah, that's not you yeah. know it's not an easy thing, you know, mm. to adjust to being a dad. Um so I think that's my thing. This year I don't want to work for someone else either. Yeah. Um so I'm also trying to do this whole, you know, music thing and trying to make yeah. a business and shit. But now I also gotta think about my family mm. and my daughter and how I'm gonna yeah, yeah, so what's, get your, what's your plan, man? Because, what's your plan? My plan is just to keep going. Do the <laughs> same thing you're doing. Because yeah. I have faith, I've never wavered, mm. you know. And it, although it's not easy to adjust to being a dad, I, it's not... Everyone makes it out your whole life like it's some ethereal thing. That yeah. some, your, yeah. your life changes right before your eyes and it has changed, but it's just... The impact's not as, like, people make it out like it's something that, you know, and it's really, I feel more or less the same. I'm just bad now, you know, like, I've got a family, it's not just about me anymore. I think it's because you know yourself as well, though, because some people, like, some people their whole life changes when they have a baby because they just, they finally have a role. Like, I know women that have just, all they've wanted to do is be a mum, and then mm. they become a mum, but you forget that, like, that kid's going to grow up and and leave like yeah. as well. You know, the, the, bird, the bird's got to leave the nest, man. That's exactly the thing that um, Rose was saying, that she doesn't just want to be her identity as a mum. And that's the thing. I My philosophy was that children come through you, but you don't own them. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm going to do my best to take care and to 
teach it the ways yeah. of how I think it should li- live. But then, you know, I don't own her. She's yeah. her own person. She just came through us. She's mm-hmm. gonna live her own life, and she's gonna discover her own way to do things. You know what I mean? So it's like people are too possessive of their children, and like that, they make them feel like they're their creation. They're yeah. bloody. You're my little puppet. You're my little. But you know, they're their own person. Which is weird. You don't own them. They just came See, through you. You know. Again, with mo- modern society, is very. Before we get Sally to answer the question, her question um, about the comfort thing. But Chloe was telling me because Chloe works in childcare. Um, she was telling me that like parents openly admit to being helicopter parents, and I didn't. I didn't even know that was a thing. And Chloe explained to me. I was like, "What the fuck's a helicopter parent?" And she said, "Like you're always hovering over the kid, and like you're very like obsessed with it. And like, oh, don't do that, don't do that. And like the kid, like all, the, and you basically just smother your kid because it's 2022 now, and you're allowed to be different. People will literally admit to it, like on the paperwork and shit. They write helicopter parent." So all the staff know when that parent comes, everything has to be like in place. And the kid, if the kid gets like accidentally, I mean, another kid bites it, the parent goes off its head. Why this did that? And I was like, people admit to that, to being a helicopter. I was like, what? Just let the kid fucking bite another kid, bro. The kid gives a fuck. Like, like, it gives a shit, bro. And I was like, wow. And she's like, yeah, they openly admit to it. And I was like, holy fuck. Oh, that is my, fucking crazy. My 17th birthday party, man. You, you remember my party. Ooh, that's, another, that's another podcast in itself, bro. Right? Talk believe, about that shit. Not believe my mum let that happen. But anyways, my 17th <laughs> birthday party obviously was loose. Many people there. And oh. one of my friends came and she had real strict parents. Oh, yeah. And she was 17 too, mm. and she wasn't allowed to drink until she was 18. And anyway, as long as very short, she got fucking wasted mm. to the point where she was like throwing up whatever, I had to call her parents to come pick her up. So her dad, <laughs> her dad, Fuck. Oh, yeah, so her dad came to pick her up or her brother or mother or something like that. The next day, I get a phone call. Mm. And they're like, answer the phone, she's like, hello. I'm like, hi, do you know who this is? <laughs> They're like, this is Blah Blah's father. I'm like, oh. Like, where is your mother? And I'm like, oh, no. Really? Like, come on, man. Like, seriously, like, we didn't shove the vodka drink, down yeah. her throat. She like, had her own choice, man. You know man. what I mean? Yeah. And anyways, he ends up going off at my mum, calling her a bad mother, all this kind of stuff. Wow. Like, all this shit. And my mum just laughed it off at the end. Yeah. Like, she hung up. She's like, whatever. Like, it's, yes. like, she's 17 years old. Like, I know, obviously, like, the legal age drinking is 18, mm-hmm. but, like, can lay off like you're gonna like at that age still and there's been a couple of like people I've known as well like their parents just like have so much yeah, say man. still to like an, an older age and it's like man like you gotta let these people live their life like they're people they're not your protege of like perfection like man I don't want to make assumptions but I guarantee you usually parents like that watch as soon as you they turned 18 I bet you they went off the rails yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever they want that's you usually I mean? that's usually like, what happens but I don't know, I, I, that's fucked up, because I think your mother was one of the coolest freaking girls I ever met, bro, because every time you had parties, your mum would be there with us till the end. Yeah. Partying, bro, like, she was she was at the bender with us when it was just, like, five of us left. My mum was funny. Man, I think that shit's a lot... Woman. Wouldn't you rather do that with your kids and your kids' friends so you know at least they're safe? Mm. Yeah, we may not be doing the, the you know, what's supposed to be doing when you're only 17, but at least we're not in the fucking park or at the fucking back of some factory mm. where you can get hurt or if something happens to the kids and we're just kids and something happens, we don't know what the fuck we're... Kids are gonna do it anyway. Yeah. 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 And that was, like, like, that was always my mum saying like, yeah. you know, I want to like be the, the house that's safe. And monitor it, what's going on then. Okay, yep, yeah, okay, she's a bit fucked, we'll put her to bed, med- okay, we've got to call his parents, we've got... Yeah. If and your mum's like, not there, we're gonna, we're gonna go fucking ballistic at the house. Like, yeah. <laughs> and she got looked down on from other parents. She did because of nah, the man. stuff. But like, she probably, to, to be honest, I probably won't be as loose as my mother. Like the parties were pretty. <laughs> <laughs> the parties were <laughs> fucking <laughs> crazy. <man. laughs> she was very very loose. But yeah. she like she in the same sense was such a put together woman. Like she taught yeah. me how to cook. She kept everything yeah. clean. Our house was. The like, house was always immaculate. She was like, such a boss. She worked four mm. jobs at a time sometimes. She yes. always learnt different things. Like at one point she was like a marriage celebrant. Another point she was a counsellor. Another yeah. point she was this, that. Like always trying new things. Always mm. like, and in the end she had a like nearly paid off mortgage on her own. Like lived such yeah. a fucking hectic life. Had all of her shit together. But still partied fucking hard with her daughter. Yeah. And had the house where all my friends loved her. All my friends knew her. Like... 
and she was just funny. Like, I would yeah, like to be... Yeah, she was cool, man. You know what I mean? She was never strict. Like, she had her strict things. Like, she had things that she didn't want me to do or that yeah. she, you know, whatever. But still had that leniency. Like, not trying to just be this person that thinks they can't do anything wrong. Like, a full, like, god yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It never works, by the way. Being a parent would be crazy. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's not, you're saying it's not as crazy as what you think, but, yeah, like, it is, I'd be... But, you know, people, the way people make it out your whole life... Yeah, but, and, and she's still very young, obviously, she's, like, a month old, but, you know, I feel like when they're a bit older, that's when it kind of, you got to really, you're moulding this person. Yeah, that's when you start. Stages of yeah. life. But, um, yeah, I just, I feel like, it, you're right, it's because of that sense of self, like, my identity isn't just a father, I'm just going to work, yeah. I'm coming home, yeah. yeah. Teaching the kid this, doing that, you know, you still gotta be yourself, and that's the same with Rose too. You know, she still got her own identity. You know. Well, I mean, if anything, if it was me, it wouldn't it make it make me want to push even harder with the music, because then you want to now be able to support. <laughs> that's what that's what it <laughs> is, man. I mean, I've been doing this yeah. music thing yeah. before she was born. I'm not gonna stop now. It's yeah. just made me want to go harder. Go know? hard, bro. Like, see, I know. take heaps of pride in going like like when I look at my parents, I'm like, my dad, it's like a rock god in his own head like he he just has always been about rock music he's been bands his whole life like that's his thing his thing is like old school rock music mm. he's now like starting a business in it like all this kind of stuff and he was a cop and he took a lot of pride in being a cop so yeah. like had that and then mum the spiritual like woman like really deep down always trying to like work on the spiritual side just a hippie and mm. i love that they have those like but there'd be like those identities yeah but there'd be so many things we're like oh mum's like mum's mum yeah. Like, you know what I mean? She's like, she's, she's just always been mum. But 100%. it's like, I grew, I got a, like, part of my side that's spiritual from mum, and I got a part of my side, like, mental party music side from my dad, like, yeah. whatever, like, two little bits from their personality that I enjoyed and then created my own. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it's so important, I think, to have your own identity and not dude. lose yourself in just being, like, a parent. And being a parent is awesome, but, like, you're also a person. Exactly. Yeah, you got to keep, you got to, Chloe always says that too, just because you have kids, you can't let your life then just slip away and go to waste. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you got to obviously take care of the kid, but you still got to do the shit that you want to do and get your goals and dreams achieved. But, um, before we forget, what what's your thing you want to do this year that you want to get out of your comfort zone? Um, Something big. Yeah. It's funny to ask a question, but I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> I have a lot of like manifestations of the year, but I think mm. uh, to get out of my comfort zone, I want to I wanna host a workshop that's like a paid workshop. Because I've obviously done a workshop before, but I did it for free. Mm. So like people could just come and sit for free. It was like okay. 10 spots. But like to get out of my comfort zone, I think to be paid for like the creation, like the Heal My Gut workshop, like that was a lot of hours of effort on me you know what I mean like I put together the folders I put together this you know the the presentation I put together the information in my head like laid it all out did all the props everything that I did like took time and effort but like I was just doing it for the funsies so to this like to be paid for my work uh, in front of like maybe 30 people would be really out of my comfort zone mm. Because like obviously they're putting down money to get the like the the service that I'm providing mm-hmm. and the, like the information that I'm providing, but like to get paid to do something like that would be really uncomfortable for me. So I mm-hmm. think getting out of my comfort zone in that way would be a yeah, big yeah. one that's towards one. yeah that's towards a, the end of the year. That's a that's a good um point too. Because shout out by Stephen, he once told me something a couple of years ago. He said, when you officially get paid for your services, you're a professional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how doesn't, much. Doesn't matter how, how much and um, how often. He said, as soon as you get paid for your services, you are a professional. Mm. So I think that'd be a, that's fucking yeah. That's a, that's a sick sick goal. Yeah, and I started doing like paid um, consults and stuff like that because yeah. I can get people in for free consults as I like work for my college online. Mm. But I don't see like I'm limited by time and by the university's like constructs of how we provide our treatment plan and stuff like that. Whereas if I like take on a client, my treatment plan is like way more detailed, like it's got pictures of what you need to buy, where you need to go, what you need to do, like all that kind of stuff and has a lot of more information. So I'll get, like I'll have people pay me if they're coming through my Heal My Health business. Um, But yeah, to do one that's like a bunch of people in front of me where I'm, it's a performance really. Like if you're doing a workshop and you're standing up and doing the presentation, it's like, 
you're performing for people, making sure that you're talking right, that you're getting the information out right, you're not like some nervous little rack at the, like, yeah, at the yeah, front yeah, of the yeah. at the front of the group. So that would get me out of my comfort zone. So I guess um, now that I've said it, like I'll start working on it. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it now. You gotta yeah. do it now, man. Yeah. yeah, fuck yeah. That's fucking. That's fucking sick. So this year is the year of everyone doing crazy shit that we're not comfortable with. And uh, trying to move forward with ourselves, man. I just really want to stop working, bro. Uh, I, I don't think I can mentally take another year, man. Seriously, I don't know. Everyone's got their breaking point, man. And I'm fucking... I'm fucking close to that, the top of the lid, man. I'm going to start oozing out the side like a fucking big jar of jelly. I'm going to start oozing down the side of the jar and shit, man. I don't know if I can... I don't know, man. That's why I'm trying so hard to fucking do this online shit. And just don't waver, man. Keep nah, going. Man. Don't waver. Yeah. You come this far. Yeah. Nearly there, bro. Just you gotta, keep going. And you got to get past that point of being completely done. Like anyone that wants to leave a job mm. is always like boiling for like yeah. a year, and yeah. then finally gets out of it. And it's like, but the, the, like the beautiful thing about doing it is that like, I don't know, like life only goes forward, right? You mm. only have the future. So the second mm. that you get the change, and although it feels like you're stuck in mud now, mm -hmm. when it comes, then it's like the past is behind you and you forget that you even fucking worked for people like yeah, yeah. before, you know what I mean? You remember that it was a struggle and you remember yeah. that like, you're like, thank God I'm figuring it out and I'm on my own now and I have my own time and my own space. But like, then there's only that forward, like, which yeah. is crazy. And we're still so young. Like, oh. yeah. It's crazy how young we still are. I, I just, I hate working like my the owner of my company literally has like a fucking two million dollar mansion and i pay for that shit like we're, with my heart like our hours pay for that oh, my heart <laughs> like my heart and my soul pays for this cunt's mansion bro and he's fucking like that man that shit makes me so mad bro it's like fuck man like oh it's like that's when you, like you're working towards Eventually, yeah. you on your own. I want to be the old prick sitting in the mansion, but not having little slaves work for me while I do it. I want to do it on my own. Like that's the that's the fucking that's gonna be so satisfying, bro. Would you guys have a mansion if you had the money? No, no. I probably I, would. I would you have would? a nice yeah. house. I would, but the room, you know, justified to the amount of people living there. Like I don't want all. Nah. I don't want fifteen fucking rooms for three people. You know what I mean? Like True. I have a nice house for the space. So yeah. yeah. No, look, I, I, nice, I'll, ad modern. I'll admit, like, yeah, I'm a materialistic kind of guy. Like I told, like I admit, I'll buy the nice car, I'll buy the big house by the water, but once, I'm not going to be the guy who's got 15 mansions everywhere and I, I never go, I never see half of them and shit. I'm not going to be that guy. Yeah. I just want to sort myself out for me and my partner, and then the rest, bro, I want to help other people. Yeah. I want to help others. Bro. I just want to live comfortably. Like, yeah. I, I, I would. I want to like. If I'm uh, getting paid, I'm happy living where I am now, as and just being paid. But my conditions, you know, don't change because yeah. I'm comfortable. I'm happy. I have a house. I have a roof. I have food. Mm. I don't need much more, you know. But if I had the money, yeah. I would get a nicer house, water. I might have a fucking, I don't know, a theater room or something. But yeah. it won't be huge, ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, before we continue, I just want to say shout out to my homie James, Sally's partner. You've got me for my Christmas Kringle, little whiskey things with little ice cubes in them. They're fucking awesome. Um, thank you. I do want to get James on here too. Yeah. One time, because he also has his own business. He's into music. Me and him talk about music all the time. Um, he's a little bit into his cryptos and NFTs and shit, so I think he'd be a cool episode. So oh, you guys would have heaps. To probably get him on next, to be honest. I'll, I'll message him after this shit anyway. But um. All right, so what are you drinking in there? What is it? Yeah, uh, it's fucking whiskey and <laughs> give diet. Me, give diet. me a sip. It's whiskey and diet vanilla coke. Excuse the diet vanilla coke. It's the first thing I grab. I want to start drinking whiskey and shit. Too. Excuse the diet vanilla yeah, coke. <laughs> shout, shout out Luke Spateri who left me that diet vanilla coke. I don't know why. That's pretty good. Delicious. I like the vanilla diet. <laughs> it's not bad. Eh? No, no sugar and shit. Mm. I don't know. It's a, that's pretty good. Yeah, but um, and I'm pretty sure it's flat too. <laughs> So if you think that tastes good now, wait till you have it with actual like <laughs> Coke when it's not flat. It's fucking so yum. Anyway. Mm, that's good. Um, so do you want to, what, should we answer a couple of questions? Well, you reckon? I, got you, a, I got a few. So. You always have more. So we'll start with your ones, I guess. But I only asked one question. You asked a lot of questions. Mm. I only said, I put on my story. If you responded, thank you. Um, so the question was, what do you think is um, one of the biggest problems in modern society today? And the first person to respond was app four two two three. 
He says, um, can't look up from their phone. Uh, well, he says, social media is poison. Can't look up from their phone. That in itself is a problem. Oh, and also that. creates problems. Yeah, I hate that. And, um, I hate that. Yeah, I agree 100%, man. Like, it's see, definitely a problem. <laughs> how many people have you almost seen get hit by a car because they're walking across the street like this? Mm. And I can fucking look up. <laughs> I can look where you're fucking walking. It's caused yeah. like problems in our distraction though. Like we're just all – like our focus ability is so low. Attention from, span. Yeah, the attention span is so, so low. Like It's sad. And it's just dwindling and dwindling. And I'm like finding it even in myself and I'm trying now to like – implement like focus strategies so like the other day i was trying to read this book that i've got mm. and i kept like reading a little bit and then i would like get a snapchat from the girls and i would like reply and, like, yeah, no. and then like no. i'd read a little bit more and then yeah. like instagram story would like oh, instagram would yeah, tick off up, yeah. and i'm like you know what i'm gonna set my alarm for 25 minutes and do not look and at the i'm phone, gonna put man. the phone over there and until the alarm goes off i'm not touching yes, it mm-hmm. that's and good. like i had to like but I'm, I'm having to do that now, especially like with studying and stuff like yeah. that, trying to read a lecture or, or focus for three hours on a lecture. Like, especially now that everything's online and you've like just on Zoom and you can literally just scroll yeah, through your phone. It's, it's, like, it, and it makes it worse too because the people, like the, the government and stuff, they're pushing for it more because it keeps us stupid. It keeps the people stupid and on like a, like a, like a zombie level. So it's easier to control and monitor, like especially with the way – Everyone's been seeing this metaverse bullshit on Facebook, man. I'm, I, it's fucking scary. Like I'm excited because like I'm a I'm like I said I can profit off this shit, so I'm 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 excited, but I'm not excited for the the. Have you seen Ready Player One? No. That movie. I'm telling you, man, shit's gonna turn like that. I need to Where watch it. it it's gonna get. You, please watch it if you got time to today or tomorrow, whenever. Just try watch it this week. It's crazy. Like it's gonna get to the point. I was telling Chloe this fucking yesterday. It's going to get to the point where we're not going to have to leave our living rooms to go to work. Yeah. And it's very well, fucking scary. That's what Meta, Facebook, yeah. has shown in that video, what they're doing. And that's what it's going to be. They've literally already said and shown how it's going to work. <laughs> you're going to be sitting at home and you're going to pop up a hologram fucking desk and you're going to type on your little... I'm telling you, man. Apparently, it's coming quick, bro. Apparently, I was reading articles where there's already unis and stuff in um, America... They're doing classes f- oh, yeah, fully seen that. in virtual reality. Yeah, I've seen that. Wow, really? In virtual reality. So you, so you wouldn't have to leave your house to go to uni. Okay, awesome if you've got to travel far. But man, I think mentally people are going to bro, people are going to turn into slobs. Like yeah. slobs who can't um, interact with other humans and be like half of the people already out there. You're all socially awkward cunts. And now this shit's going to make it worse. Yeah. It's going to make it way worse, bro. And it's going to be like, I'll, I'm, I'm a social guy. I love meeting people, talking, having a drink at the pub with someone. If you want to talk about business or whatever, I'm still into that. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it with a fucking goat with goggles on and me sitting there while drinking my whiskey through my goggles and shit. But I don't want to be doing that shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And people already are awkward and have anxiety and have this and have that because they already don't like do enough shit. And then it's going to turn into having to do virtual reality. Bro, it's going to... I don't know, man. Like I said, I'm happy because I'm going to profit. <laughs> but some of you, man, I'm a little worried, man. you like, got to embrace like, change. That's the honest truth. I'm just a little worried. Like, it, like, yeah, I don't know. Especially people who already struggle with mental health. I think it's not... It's going to be... It's going to make everything so much more worse, man. Yeah. Like you need technology to watch player really, one. Technology really freaks me out, man. It's, it's fucked, scary bro. shit. Yeah. It is scary watching, shit. Watching, um, what was it? Black Shadows? No. Oh, Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Black Mirror. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That stuff, like it, the people that create movies or TV series on like futuristic, like there's, I remember James telling me there's actually people like that, that's their job. They're like futuristic. Futurists, yeah. Futurists, yeah. Predictions. Like predictions of the future and stuff like that. And like watching Black Mirror is like, yeah. Wow, this is actually so close to us that we don't even Bird, we don't even yeah. realize. The one that I really loved was like when they have like the chips where you can basically put your memory onto like computers or TVs or something like that and like but it was normal life shit so like the husband and the wife are having an argument. Mm. And, like, he was like, you said this. And she's like, no, no. I didn't. So she'd, like, throw up the memory of ah, the argument on yep, the TV and yep. stuff. And it was just, like, that would like that's a real-life scenario of how, how that whole yeah. thing would play out. And it would just 
mess with humanity. Like yeah. it mess with our human nature of like the past is the past. Like yeah. people would be living so much more in the past. Yes. Like and if you have a traumatic event, you know, you might like just like sit in it and watch it over and over again or like oh, if yeah. you lose people you know what i mean like i, I know if i could do that right now mm. and just throw up memories and like remember my mom or like have those right. memories of my the, mom be i would the be worst. i'd be sitting in it like yeah, i'd you, be yeah. wanting to do it all the time yeah, yep, yep, so yep 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 see I, i'd be fucked because uh, that's my main point with chloe when we have an argument i just say i don't remember what i said <laughs> and she'd be like well <laughs> i'm like fuck <laughs> The woman always remembers more. Oh, man. yeah. I, I always, the James always says... These are animals, like, man. These are <laughs> animals. These are like elephants when it comes to memory. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Do elephants have good memories? Yes. Oh, okay. The elephant never forgets. That's what they say. What, what they would say. you come back as, if you could come back as an animal? Because I think mine would caterpillar. be Caterpillar. Bird. Yeah. Bird. Definitely a fucking bird. A I'm caterpillar, I'm, what? <laughs> like, you know those little hairy ones that just crawl around? <laughs> They're just chilling, brother. They live for about three days, too. <laughs> Perfect. Short and sweet. Oof. Um, uh, Another one. Uh, Zexa. Shout out to Shout you, Shout out bro. Zexa, bro. This Biggest guy fan. is a fucking sick guy. He full start on a fan page yeah. and shit. So follow the TJM Records fan page, bro. Yeah, well. Legend. Anyway, um, go on. He says, COVID being taken too far. <laughs> oh, bro. Don't even get me started I about mean, that shit. That, there's a lot of problems with that. Yeah. Everyone's... No one really knows everything. No one really knows anything. And they're trying to do their best to fucking, you know, manage shit. It's just, it's a bit of a mess, man. I mean, you can go on about COVID for ages, but. Hey, just be careful, bro, because this is the perfect start to implement VR and virtual reality and shit. Oh, everyone's too scared of COVID. Stay I'm, home. I'm going to put, I'm going to stay home where I'm safe in my little fucking dusty ass room and put my headset on and fucking get on the train and go to fucking work or uni uh, through virtual reality so i don't catch covid well i think uh, it, the i think the plan what they're trying to do now is live with it so they say we'll see yeah. if we go into a lockdown but it's like i was saying off camera now people are starting to care less and less because everyone's getting it yeah. at first everyone cares because they yeah. don't expect to get it and it's easy to tell everyone else to stay home but now that yeah. you've got it and everyone's getting it everyone's like they realize the symptoms aren't that bad and they're like oh fuck it you know i still yeah. want to go out i'm not gonna fucking sit home it's easy for everyone else so it's a bit like I'm seeing a lot of hypocrites in that sense, yeah, but, yeah. you know, anyway. You are all fuckwits. <laughs> um, Every single, I think I low-key hate my fans. He's like, you're a fucking <laughs> little cunt. Anyway. On, on that point, uh, good mate Cremona, shout out him. He does uh, the, the prints for our merch. He does the shirts mm. and the hoodies. He's a man cunt. Thank you. He says, um, the government, <laughs> which, you know, government, I agree. I think we need a new system. I think democracy is fucking rotten. Wait, wait, wait. What, what was the question you asked? I said, what's one of the biggest problems in modern society? Oh, the opinion? government, yeah. And he's saying the government is one yeah. of the biggest problems. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. I think we need something new. I don't know what. I think we're going to get something new. I think everything's on the verge of crumbling and being mm. rebuilt into something else. Mm, Do you think our government's bad? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not, not as bad as like... I don't, I don't think we're as corrupt as other governments. No way, but... but I think every government is corrupt. I think Australia is um, pretty innocent yeah. in comparison. Like, I think we're just like the dumb little we're, brother that they, yeah, you know, they don't care just, about. And yeah, they're just trying to buffoons, like, trying to fucking... Look at the fucking American government. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's backwards. That's yeah. very, very, very sad. And like the Nepalese, like going to Nepal and looking at how that country is run, even just seeing like... No, because th uh, those countries are just trying to survive. Mm. Yeah, so true. they're actually like not better off, but like they'd be the most sincere because they'd be looking at their people and going, okay, no, like we're poor as fuck here. We need to sort of survive and get food on the table for the people. But whereas because countries like Australia and America and England and all that, we, they've got, not that they, everyone's probably in debt to China, but we've got money. Mm. So they don't give a fuck about us. I think that, like, I think you know? some governments are more corrupt than others, obviously. But I just think inherently the whole system is very flawed. Of having a government, there's this, they like I've seen this thing. Like the politicians call themselves the fucking big swinging dicks. That's the names they got. These old cunts who run the country. They call themselves that. They're not. They're not operating from a place of, you know wanting to help other people they're operating from ego and inflating their own sense of self in these high positions and that's not how a country is gonna function well yeah, you know what i mean the unfortunate thing is that anyone decent-minded that like isn't trying to like crave power or like move towards power or like you know what i mean being a stance of ownership or like power in the government like 
decent people don't want to be in politics. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> decent people yeah, exactly. don't want the like the arguments or the back and forth and they can see all the shit that goes on in there because like I even have like my dear friend of mine, he has always been into politics and was, mm. you know, kind of had the goal of moving into politics and becoming like a a person in the government body. But as it went on, the deeper that he got into it and the more that he saw the corruption and like yeah. all the different like the 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 hypocrisy and everything that goes on mm. in it, like he just said, I don't want to be part of it. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I don't want to do and this now shit. he's moving on into something like, you know, ambulance work or something like yeah. that. But like, it's the, the fact that really decent people wouldn't want that energy. And so we can't, like, we're struggling to get good people in to positions of power to make good decisions for the people. Like, yeah. it's just like bolding fat white men that, like, just want something to stand on to feel and, like they fucking mm-hmm. have a say. And, and that's why I think the whole system is flawed. And just yeah. on that topic, think about this, right? If you have a job, a business, right, and you're hiring and you get all these applicants in and then an 84-year-old man comes in and instead of all these young 30-year-olds and stuff, an 84-year-old man comes in, would you hire this 84-year-old man? Fuck No. The presidents of the United States are all... They've been over fucking... Joe Biden is like fucking yeah. 82 or some shit. And you let him run And he's the running country? the country. Yeah, that's... Yeah. You know, and I think just the whole system, the fact that it's all terrible people that are doing this, we're letting them run the country. And then the media, everyone's none the wiser. All the civilians are just sheep. They don't understand it. Just ingesting all this stuff that the TV tells them. I feel like we need a government, though. Well, like we, we need something. Yeah, but you need, <laughs> yeah. we need, yeah. Like, humans need structure. They need to, you know, like, follow rules. Like, yeah. definitely. But Even yeah. just in this whole, like, COVID situation, obviously the rules have been backwards, but at least people have something to follow in a time of, like, complete and utter not knowing what the fuck well, to do. Well, it's like, like, what we always say, it all, it all comes back to fear, is because most humans, they're so scared and uncertain that their comfortability is about to be you know poked at or ruined that they need they look people are constantly people want to be led all the time but not a lot of people have the skills to lead Mm. you know what? so people are constantly like watching the news oh what are they going to say today what are the numbers today do i have to wear a mask tomorrow to work like people are constantly looking for that gratification of being told and stop doing that who gives a fuck man live your life just go outside and live your life stop looking for people to tell you what to fucking do man you know what i think one of the biggest problems with society is is that we're not accepted acceptant or taught about death because mm. if people accepted death and understood like death and spirituality a little bit more, it wouldn't be so scared. Like, what is yeah. there to be scared of? Yeah, if you're not scared to die, we've, like yeah. we've all been dead before you were born. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but like people are yeah. fearful, and like, but what is there to be scared of if you're not afraid to die? But in the same sense, if people didn't have fear, the world would also lose. A lot of structure. Yeah. If definitely. there was no fear in the world, the yeah. like everything would be fucking mental. Like, imagine if no thing. one cared to die. Yeah. Mm. Everyone people be, be doing r- riots crazy. and shit. Running around <laughs> naked and shit. But <laughs> I think death, I think you're right. I think spirituality, like, you know, I was saying this to my missus the other day. You know, in high school, you get a book, everyone reads, like, some, there's some books that you're given that you have to read in a the syllabus. They should, instead of reading fucking Catcher in the Rye, make them read. The Power of Now. Make them read yeah. an Eckhart Tolle book. Make them read a Deepak Chopra book. You know what I mean? And that'll... If I read those in high school, I guarantee that would have left some imprint on me. I would have definitely Fuck picked bro. something up from those books instead of 100%. reading useless books. Mm. You know, maybe the problem is... If you... if Like, looking at... We're trying to find the problem of society. But, like, looking at the kind of development of people. Like, a huge thing is the education system because that's that's where it all starts right but you know what they're actually they're I don't know too much into it, but they're actually starting to add in like mindfulness classes and things like that within the structure of oh, like okay. the syllabus. Yeah. So it, really? is, it is actually getting heard. About a little bit. I hope so. They Man. fucking should definitely do that. Yeah, it is getting heard, but there could be definitely a lot more oh, like, yeah. you know, cut out some stuff that isn't exactly fully necessary. Like, I don't know. I loved ancient history, but fuck, man, it's ancient history. Yeah, like, I, I when loved are we it gonna? Too. <laughs> I was like number one. I freaking loved it. But like, that's useless. There's, there's classes, yeah, like that. There would be more use in developing character and you know building humble humans, good people, than learning about like I don't know some other shit from the past. But like, 
building good humans and then maybe one day eventually society will move into like a more humble, more calm space where we can actually have decent people in power that work for the people, not yeah. for themselves. I am optimistic. I think things are changing, but we'll see. Yeah, I've got two right. more of these. Um, Neros, our cousin, uh, says ignorance. And I agree. I think one of my biggest problems in society, I think, in my opinion, is people narcissism and people not taking in anything. Like, yeah. I've, I've come to realise how bad it is. Most people yeah. are just living in their mind... And not you're talking to someone. They're not even fucking. They're not, they're not, they're not taking in yet. anything not, you're saying. Bro, we talked. I'm pretty sure we talk, spoke about this last time Sally was on. But it's a when big you, problem, bro. You speak and people don't listen to what you're saying, but they expect you to listen to them, and you're just stroking their ego. That shit, yeah. I always wonder about people like watching TV, right? Like a narcissist, they're watching TV. Are they even fucking paying? Are they just looking at the screen and seeing things? That's literally how most people live. And it's they're crazy. just sitting there with the remote hey, in there, and they don't even know what the fuck they're watching. They don't know what channel it's on, but it's just they're just living on the shallow surface level of life, man. No one, they're just stuck in their head. It's just them. They're not taking in anything. That's part of focus, but as well, like when when we're losing our ability to focus, when our like brain is firing in all different directions, ten seconds here, ten seconds there, ten seconds here. Like people don't know how to sit and actually just be present on the one conversation that like someone yeah. is in front of them and like talking to them and listening in that way, like shutting out everything else in the mind and just listening to the words that they're saying and taking them in. Like the ability of the human brain to do that is slowly dwindling. Oh. And, like we were part of the generation that didn't have phones fully like we got lucky. You know what I mean? I say this all the time. If we were born even like say five years later, we would be fucking retards. What people need to <laughs> I learn. I swear to God, we would be dumb ass. What people like, really need to learn, I think, is that the mind is like a infectious disease. Like you ever, the best example, right, is, you know, when you do scripture in school, right? I know everyone's got this, right? You're doing scripture and you're talking about God or whatever. And in the back of your brain, your brain's going, fuck God. You know what I mean? You, yeah. And that's an example of how you aren't your thoughts. Your thought, your mind is always trying to put you down. It's always trying to find something negative and it's trying to feed off this. You've got to be able to not listen to your mind. You've got to be able to shut it off. And when someone's talking to you, don't be in your head going, what am I going to say next? What am I going to do? What am I? Just absorb it and then respond from a place of presence. Don't fucking be in your head 24-7 going through life, talking to yourself in your head all day. You know, and I think that's an important thing people need to learn. I think they really should. That's why I say they should put those books in schools. Get a start. People learning that their mind is just a tool. Your thoughts, people are so attached to the idea of their thoughts and that it's them. But it really isn't. <laughs> it really isn't. I'm telling you, it's not. Your mind, your thoughts, it's your enemy. you got to conquer it. you got to run your mind. Don't let your mind run you. Man, if I was re if, if I was reading spiritual books in school, bro, I'd be in the fucking woods right now, banging sticks on logs and shit, <laughs> and making music like that, bro. I'd have a long ass beard and shit, like fuck, bro. But yeah, uh, but there's like there's there's mental like mind books that just teach you how to manage your mind. Like as you were saying, like if you like if you can manage your mind, you can manage your existence. You can manage your like you can manage your life better. You can show up in business like to be like I guess like present minded not spiritually minded, but like present minded and like not talking to yourself while like in your head when other people are talking to you, all that kind of stuff, yeah. like really managing that space. You'd like perform so much better in business, like in relationships, like everything like that. It would just be more like structure in life where you can make more time in your mind for everything around you rather than for everything that it wants to just freak out about. And like yeah. it comes from fear, like the, the easiest path, for the brain to take is fear because it's the safest. Like we're pre-wired from prehistoric, from the second that we were humans, you know what I mean? We're just trying to stay safe, get food, like be run away from danger, yeah, be comfortable. And, yeah. So like the brain is just wired to run to the safest option. And a lot of the time the safest option just keeps you in your box and yeah. tells your mind like be careful of what this person's going to think of you, be careful of this, yeah. be careful of that because it's danger, 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 danger. But, you know, when you just move – away from fear into love like when you sit in a space of love for the person that's in front of you and talking to you then like love listens you know what i mean like yeah. love love is going to sit there and listen to that person yeah. love is not going to judge itself or like run around in your mind thinking that you're a shit person or you're weird or you're awkward or anything like that like because you're loving yourself and you're loving the person around you and you're loving life so 
like just moving away from fear into love and just fucking listening. Like yeah. learning that shit in school would like even just that concept of fear and love, like learning that in school, you just don't, you just don't learn that stuff. Yeah. And if you had that integrated from the beginning, you know, you might be able to nip fear in the butt from the beginning of your life and yeah. then kind of create a better existence. And if one person creates a better existence, if everyone did that, like for themselves, the whole place would be better. The world <laughs> would be a better place. I yeah. think the school system needs a revamp. I mean, it's just as easy. A lot of people live their life imagining the worst case scenario. What our oh, life's going good. What's the next bad thing that's going to happen? It's just as easy to imagine good, it going yeah. very well than it is to it going bad. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, you got to, I think it's important for people to really do some internal work on their brain. Yeah. Anyway, the last one of these um, from Wicked, shout out Wicked, another big fan, um, says uh, Mark Manson's theory of the feedback loop from hell in his book, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I haven't read the book, but I looked up this uh, theory. And so it's basically like when you feel guilty about, so like, you feel something makes you angry and then you think about it and you're like, fuck, I'm angry that I'm angry. And then it's just a constant loop of you feeling shit about how you're feeling and like not being able to break out of that mm -hmm. cycle of negative feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of what we're just touching on. That's all about being able to mentally, yeah. you know, organize your self and manage your feelings. And that is a problem for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, it's jumping into the thought process. Like, you need to find your kind of out, like your switch. If you imagine like your brain and your neurons and your thoughts firing around like this and if you like listen to yourself and you see it's in a negative spiral, you've got to find your like like your switch, your cutoff point. So like what is it that you say to yourself that brings you out of that? Like, mm. But you've got to be listening to your mind to do that. That's the problem is a lot of people like just pacify themselves with everything externally, watching TV or mm. – or social media or whatever that they're not listening but if you tune in if you take a moment go what's my thoughts saying like and a lot of the time it's negative like i'm a positive fucking spiritual soul but a yeah. lot of the time my brain if i tune in i'm like being mean to myself i'm like oh yeah. wait like all right love love yourself what's going on like yeah. <laughs> like that guy on the street love yourself, yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like people people don't realize too right but put, put think of it like this right People go to the gym. They want to work out, make your muscles look good. I want to get ripped. But I want to fucking, you know, be able to lift this, whatever. But you need to realize too that your brain also needs to go to the gym. Your brain needs to work out just as much as your body, just as much as your muscles. You need to have mental strength. And doing stuff like that, we're not always thinking of the negative, not always putting yourself down, listening to other people, taking in what they say and actually giving your opinion back and stuff. That's all working your brain out. And people who don't like, you know what I mean. You've got you've got to work on that just like you got like just like you work on the gym. It's the but same it, fucking shit, bro. Don't let your brain just deteriorate and just wither away. Like and it's constant work too. Like I haven't yeah. finished a book. I just finished um, the "Be Bold" by Alexis Fernandez. She does the "Do You Fucking Mind" podcast. Amazing podcast. Amazing woman. Mm. But I just finished her book and. It felt good because I hadn't finished a book in ages. Yeah. And I like, I don't know, for the past maybe half a year, I've kind of like felt myself being a bit more negative, felt myself like slipping a little bit in being able to control my mind, um, you know, being a little bit, I, I don't know, just whatever, just feeling like not as myself. And when I finished that book, I was like, that's the first book I've finished in like two years. Like mm. I haven't actually spent the time to just, like a lot of the time books can be enjoyable, but sometimes it's a bit of a grit. Like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you got to, yeah. you got to carve out the time and a lot of, if it's self-help stuff, it's like, all right, you're thinking a lot and it takes a bit of mental energy yeah. and emotional energy to do so. So I just haven't done that. And then like when I finished it, I was like, fuck, it's been a while since I've done that. And now I have this weird, I have new concepts to play with. Like she was talking about um, doing soft work or like hard work or something like that, where like a lot of the time people, when they have a goal, they do a lot of soft work that thinks moving towards their goal, like, you know, like writing out the goal, doing the vision board, or like if you've got to go to the gym, you know, you might like uh, look at where you're going to go to the gym, but like you don't actually get a PT or you don't do like whatever. So there's soft work and hard work. And I do that a lot. Like I do a lot of planning. 
I do a lot of planning and if it's not fully planned in my head, you know what I mean? Like it's not fully written out, like, but where's the actual action? Yeah. And sometimes I will say, oh, I'm going to do this podcast and I'm going to do this one episode on this. And like, until I've got it all written out on like a word document, everything like figured out, like I don't do it, but that's soft work because it's not actually putting in the work. Yeah. So I've read this book and I've come out with this concept and I'm like, even if it, even if I just got that one, like got a few things out of it, whatever. But even if I just got that one, it's now forcing me to go, all right, am I actually doing the hard work? How many times this week have I put in the hard work? Or how many times this week am I just dancing around it and doing the soft work? Yeah. And I've got that from reading this book. And I'm like, this is what I haven't had for two years because I'm not getting information or little pockets of like gems from other yeah. people that are reminding me of new things like and pushing me to do the work that I want to do, like yeah. or pushing me to be the person that I want to be. So – it's constant. Like I feel like there's been times where I'm you know, doing the Tony Robbins and I'm like pumping it and I'm like yeah. thinking that I'm like hectic at life. I'm like pumping out all this crazy, you know, yeah. work that I want to do and then times where I'm not and I realise the times that I'm not is when I'm not feeding my mind with the fuel. Like it really is fuel. Reading books, watching like listening to podcasts, watching stuff that's all like self-help or, you know, even business help or like just how to move forward in your life or how to be a better person. Like – it is fuel to keep yourself bettering yourself. Are and you, when you don't give the car fuel, it runs out. You know what I mean? I'll like, give you. I'll give you. I'll give you a cool little gem. Right? This is something I've done. I've done a lot. Right? Skip the soft work. <laughs> Go straight to the hard work. <laughs> just do it. Like example for the podcast. Maybe obviously planning stuff's good, but just ha, ha, just try it. Where you just. Don't even plan. Just wake up and if you've got time, you feel good, just go to the studio and put the headphones on and just turn it on. Yeah, you might sit there for the first 10 minutes going, okay, fuck, I'm here, but you're there. Mm. Just start talking. Like when we first did this podcast, we just we had no idea what the fuck we were doing. We just fucking <laughs> sat here and just started rambling on about shit. But that's how we sort of, you know, got into it. And it was kind of like, so most things I do, I just go straight. I just skip the soft work and I just, I just start doing it. And the next thing you know, I'm like, holy fuck, what am I doing? <laughs> like I'm here right now, but then it's like, all right, bang, keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't know. It's just that's, that's something you could, I don't know, just the way you could look at it as well. That's my manifestation for this yeah. year. Because like I do a lot, like literally I work for like an hour on like planning out my like vision board or something like that. Yeah. And it feels good. Yeah, it, it feels awesome. It feels good. You feel like, oh, I'm going to do shit with my life. I'm inspired. But like where's the shit that you've done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I, I look. I always say, man, I don't think I just do. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but a lot of the times, yeah, I just have to adjust to what like I'm doing. I don't know. I think that's why men got further, in, not further in the world, yeah. but like men. Tony Robbins explained it right with a handbag. Like there's a crowd of people, and he says, "All right, I want the men to come up, three men to come up on the stage with everything you bought for the day." And he's like, and then I want three women to come up on the stage mm -hmm. with everything they bought for the day, mm -hmm. and three men walk on the stage, and they got their phone and their wallet. Yep. Or they've got their phone with a wallet case. Yeah. And the women walk up on the stage yep. and they've got these big ass handbag, yep. like handbags. Yep. Turned American or something then. Like, yeah. <laughs> handbags. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and he get, like, gets on stage and he starts pulling out all the shit That's from their in handbag the bag, yeah. all day. That's like women have this roundabout way of thinking that like men are just so much more like straight cut. Honestly, I envy you sometimes. Like I honestly envy men in that way that – like and I, I have to, I have to push myself to have more of a like stop fucking thinking, just go from just do go, it. go to go from just A to do it. fucking yeah. D without looking at B C E like mm -hmm. without yeah. going all around like yeah. just do it just and get there. <laughs> yeah, that's also why I think men are like. Like, about to diss on men. Yeah, no, like, dumb, the, like no, 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 no. <laughs> more less emotionally like invested in invested shit. Yeah, in yeah. Shit. Well, yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah, say like, too that also comes with a disadvantage that we, i do believe generally that women are smarter because you guys can think more and process and think about how a situation you, you, i think you're better at reading situations right? whereas men we're not so because we're always just man eh, fuck it just do it yeah just do it a, men just are better it. at like, acting we're yeah, not better you at guys are like action. better at observing and shit like that but anyway was that was that all your yeah questions? that's that's all right the yeah. sponge okay so i said I'll skip the first one because it relates to the last one as well. So I said, what stops you from following your dreams? Uh, Lydia says, stuck in a modern day slavery, not 
educated enough on how to get rich. Facts. Mm. So like basically like we were saying, <laughs> the school it, it system. all starts with school. Yeah, school, the school system start, is training people to see, be a fucking guys, remember, shit shoveler. They're trying to keep us dumb. It's what they want. They want us to stay dumb and, and, and zombified. So when, like, you know what I mean? The government, like, man, fuck, bro. There's, there's <laughs> literally people getting rich selling digital art. <laughs> and just because people... People are like investing like a couple grand in crypto. They wait for the crypto price to go up and then they sell and they come out a profit of like four or five grand. And yeah, I know it sounds scary. Fuck, I don't have a two grand to, to waste on crypto. I don't have a grand to spare. No, none of us fucking do. But it's like I always say, just do it. <laughs> because it, yeah, there's a risk to it. But man, you can come out three grand richer. And that's, that's, your, that's, your, that's your month. That's three weeks covered covered and it's just and it's and a lot of people think it's silly because i I've, i always grew up thinking right i always got taught if it sounds too good to be true it's cause it is but now in 2022 man that that saying is out the window the game is that's gone yeah, for real man. don't think like that anymore bro because i'm like there is sh- there is fucking little 12 year olds and shit and they're making filthy money doing online crypto and nft stuff just take the risk take the dive learn like, new things and i know there's a lot of people out there that use a non-believers and use a naysayers and once again it all comes down because you're too comfortable and you're too scared to try it but you're going to be left behind That's what all happened I'm with the internet when the internet first came out a lot of you older people will know yep, yep. that's the same thing that's happening yep. now so, so what learn so a little <laughs> if, you if you don't know what happened right back in the 90s or whatever the internet was coming around that's why we got very lucky born when we were born the internet was coming out. And back then it was web one, right? Web one was basically just literally, the internet was just a couple of pages. It was just Hotmail, the browser, was it even, I don't think it was Google back then, was it? Yeah, there was Yahoo and Yahoo shit. Yahoo and shit. And it was basically just a browser that had like bits of news and information. It wasn't really like, oh, you know, I'm going to fucking jump on and uh, fucking, I don't know, go into a chat room and stuff. It wasn't that stuff yet. It was very simple. And a lot of people were kind of like, nah, this is just a phase. Nothing's going to come of it, whatever. But the smart people started investing in stocks that had to do with the internet or stocks, right? And most people were going, nah, nah, it's a waste of money. It's this, whatever. Nothing's going to come of it. Look at the internet now. The world runs on the motherfucking internet. Without the internet, we would be fucked. You couldn't communicate with your friends, with your family that live away. You wouldn't know what's happening in America, the other side of the world. The news wouldn't be able to cover this. You wouldn't be able to that. You play games. You have all your bank details on your internet, on your phone, on your all that, right? That that This is Web 2. That's what it turned into. And all the people who took the risk back then, now, are rich. They're all rich as fuck. Because they invested in stocks that had to do with the internet and the web one and all that shit and all companies that were, you know, companies like um, eBay and Amazon, right? Invested in all that shit that were very dependent on the internet being successful. Look at Amazon now. Look at eBay now. They're the biggest companies in the world. We're due right? for a big change too, man. I mean, it's been about 20 yes. years. Look at the world 20 years ago, how different it was. It's been 20 yes. years again. So yes. things are ready to change. And now <laughs> what's happening now? We are going into Web 3, which is our final stage of internet. Well, it might not be the final stage. It might not be stage. the final, but for now, it's that's all that's been sort of roadmapped out, right? So this is going to last the next 20 years. So by the time we all have kids, right? It's the same fucking shit that's happening back in the 90s. NFTs, crypto, virtual reality. Decentralized exchange decentralized of wealth. money. Everyone creating right? their own wealth, not working for the man. All this shit is happening. That's what's happening. It's happening right now and you are all turning a blind eye to it because you don't understand it or you don't think it's going to be successful. Right? And in by the time you have kids, those motherfuckers are probably going to be going to school in virtual reality. And all the smart motherfuckers like myself, my brother, a few of my mates who are into it, we're all now slowly investing into this shit and we're getting into it. We're researching. And even if it's not now, but in a couple of years, all that shit's going to fucking skyrocket in price and it's going to boom. And I'm going to have a hefty fucking cash amount in my back pocket because I took the time to research and learn and invest. It's not a matter of it's, this failing and being a fad either because it's yeah. the technology pushing this that is 
be already being implemented by a lot of Yes. If you look at the big companies involved, all the big companies are getting Virtual into this reality, stuff. reality, into crypto, into it's, it's scary, happening. but exciting. So all I'm going to say is do your research. I'm not saying to fucking, you know, save up a month's wages and then just fucking buy a random crypto. Just I'm learn about it. Just, just learn how it works. That's so all you got to do. The next time, instead of watching Netflix and jacking off, open your fucking, use your phone, open your internet browser, open your Google and type in cryptocurrency that's going to blow up next nft projects that are going to blow up next and just just read about it and start doing and learning and learning because you might be able you might be the next success story the next bro i've been seeing people like on reddit posted like random dads who have made like they've paying off their house mortgages just from fucking buying a bit of artwork online for 90 dollars and they resell it for 600 fucking grand and it sounds too good to be true I'm telling you, I'm watching this shit happen with my own fucking eyes. I'm in groups where people are obsessed with this shit and it's what they do. And I'm trying to get involved and I'm trying to learn and I'm, I'm slowly sort of, you know, getting my head in the door. But it's, I'm watching it happen. People are fucking making tons of money. And it could be you. That's all I'm saying. So use your phone. Start researching. Uh, ZX says, doubting myself. So this is from um, what, what, sto- what stops you from following your dreams. So he just says doubting yourself. Yeah, a lot mm. of people struggle with that, man. Yeah, you got to just back yourself, take the dive, learn new things, and give it your all, man. Life is just a game we're all playing. You can either sit in the sidelines doing nothing. At the end of the day, nothing really matters that much. Just do what you want to do. Forget about what other people are saying because it doesn't mean nothing. They're you and you're them. I'm everyone. Everyone's the same. So. Anyway, no, just one gets, <laughs> no one gets anywhere without failure either. Yes. Like failure is actually necessary. That's how you learn. To it's move the best forward. teacher. Yeah. And doubting yourself is thinking that you're going to fail and yeah. like move into that. Be like, you fuck yeah, fail, I'm yeah. going to fail. Like I've failed heaps. Oh yeah, us too. <laughs> I've failed heaps. I'm just <laughs> waiting, just waiting to finally like get there. But I know that with each failure, like I get a little bit more resilient you and I get a little closer. bit more doubt less because – when I fail and I'm still here and I'm still going, like that's a win. That's a win. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then, then my soul gets a little bit more like resilient. So, yeah, it's so hard because like we're just human and humans are so like hard on themselves and mm. doubting themselves and shit like that. But the only reason, yeah, you're doubting is because you think you need to be perfect at everything and you just mm-hmm. don't. You just no one is fail really. and yeah, fail man. again until you like finally don't fail at something yeah. and then it feels fucking hectic and you move forward with that. Like, like a knife. All right, next, I said, sort of similar to the first question, um, why do you work for someone else and not yourself? Same thing Lydia says, I don't have the capital to create my own business. Hmm. Fair enough. But in that sense, you have to create your own capital at the same time. You can't like wait for it. It's not going to fall in your lap. Like you have to, yeah, like I believe in manifestation and stuff, but you also have to, like I said, I can't just, it's like Aussie slang said on our podcast. You can't just sit there and say, oh, I want a Range Rover. I want a Range Rover. And then you're going to wake up the next day and there's one on your front lawn. Mm-hmm. No, no. You, and- you manifest. Okay, I want the Range Rover. I can see myself sitting in a black Rover with the big rims and then get to work. Mm. Mm. And like, like, you know, a business, a business works off providing a service or a skill or a product. So, you know, if you're providing a product, then obviously you have to buy the product or make the product or, or have the capital to do that to sell it. But that is every hustle with like selling a product. But if you're doing a service or like, you know, or creating something for someone, then the money will slowly like come to you through providing that service and then you just use that money and reinvest it into the business. Yeah. So you obviously have to do your work that you're doing before you can just run off and do your business. But eventually, like say I have my job now, that is my normal weekly thing. I'm not going to be able to quit my job and just start taking like consults and doing mm. all this stuff because it's not going to pay my bills mm. and build the business. You know yeah. what I mean? I can't you know, take the money that I've got from a client that I've helped and provided that service I can't then take that and buy myself a new pair of shoes. I need to take that and put that into the business. And then eventually like the business has to be its own entity and then that has to grow. But like it takes, like you have to start somewhere and you don't Mm -hmm. have to be perfect to like, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So like Mm -hmm. eventually like, 
when you like provide that service, provide that product, you get the money back, you put it back into the business. It's not going to be something for you straight away, but then that's when that builds. But it takes time and it takes that like that kind of, yeah, that idea of like I'm not going to be rich straight off and I'm not going to be able to start like being rich straight off. Like the rich do get richer. But you actually have to get yourself there first. Like yeah. if you're not if you're not born into a rich family or not you're not like richness doesn't fall into your lap where you can just start any other business. That's why I think like they call like fucking what's her name? Kylie Jenner and all that, like businesswoman, all this kind nah. of shit. No way, man. <laughs> because <laughs> you can pay she can pay everyone to create the stuff for herself. Like she doesn't have to figure out how to how makeup is made and like then how to do the business and how to do this. Like she has a whole team of people that she just pays to create that business. But with people that don't have the means straight off, like they kind of have to learn, put the like time in and the like and all that and then put in whatever money they can. Like I'm not rich and I'm not my business isn't working yet, but I'm hoping that eventually if I keep reinvesting what I get, then yeah. that business will start to have enough money to be stable and then also to pay me. 100%, bro. Like basically, man, there's there's enough. <laughs> okay, right. Picture if you're – we're all pirates on this earth, right? And there's enough booty for every <laughs> everyone, bro. There's enough buried treasure for all of us. You just got to fucking find it, bro. It's out there. Like, it's literally out there waiting for you to take it. Like, taking candy from a baby, bro. It's the same thing with this online stuff, bro. People people are changing their lives and, like, put it, like, okay, yeah, right, you, you, you flip a crypto or whatever for 500 grand. You're not going to be rich, but fuck, man, you don't, like, that's two years worth of your work paid for. You could pay off your house, don't have to go to, you go on a holiday, you could pay off all your debts you got. I can't wait till we're talking about this when we've actually done it, bro. Mate, <laughs> mate, <laughs> mate. I'm just going to be sitting here with a cigar on, bro, my little suit on, and I'm going to be going, I fucking told you <laughs> so, man. I'm telling you right now, bro. We talk about it like we've already fucking got a, like mate. functioning businesses and like bro. functioning cryptocurrency and shit. But hey, like, but you got to you got to sometimes act like you do, man, to help the universe sort of kick you into gear a little bit. That's why. Oh, but we're going to get there. That's the oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, like, just, it's going to happen, bro. Like, I'm telling you. Clip I, that and we'll do a comparison later in a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. Is we're, we're, we're in uh, Iggy's mansion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It might, I'm gonna have a whole podcast room just for fucking. I'm telling you, man, it's gonna happen. Success is coming. I think this year it's a good year. Two, 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 man. I, I, I got a good year. feeling about this year. I've been saying it for yeah. a long time, man. This 2022. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, man. This year is gonna be fucking. Two, two, two is a good number. Juicy huh? pussies this year, boys. Fuck off, Iggy. Um, <laughs> and then ZX says because I don't know how to depend on myself, which is the working. Why do you work for someone else? See. I think when it comes to that, brother, you got to sort of, yeah, just work on yourself first. Sort of, like I said, work out your mind, get your brain to the gym and sort of start channeling some positivity through, especially this year. This is going to be the year I want to see everyone happy. I want to see the Instagram popping off, people telling each other how well they're doing and stuff like that. Um, we're going to block out the normies. So all the people that just fucking come home and do nothing with themselves, we're going to block those cunts out. <laughs> and we're gonna fucking we're gonna focus on growing our bank accounts this year, boys. I'm telling you, there's gonna be it's gonna be a good year. But yeah, I think that just comes down to working on yourself, bro, first before anything else. You gotta work. You gotta think of yourself first, and then you. Uh, this one was a simple one. Do you prefer singles or albums? Um, ev- everyone has said singles. Really, they said yep. singles. Everyone has said singles. So what? So I think we've already started off the year great then. Hell yeah, man. So we just want singles, fuck the albums off, too much work, too much effort. I'm going to put all those singles in an album and I'll put some extra like bonus tracks that I didn't uh, release as singles. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's a good That's idea. what Chris Webby did. At, at, you went all year doing the singles and then at the end of the year, release the album, all the uh, singles and yep. then... You know what I'm manifesting this year? Yep. Is you in James's studio doing a song. Oh yeah, but uh, James gonna... James sent me a, a beat a while ago, yeah. a rock beat, and yeah. I just I haven't been able to. Ro- I want to do like some, like he said as well, like some Linkin Park, how yeah, they yeah, did yeah. the Jay Z thing. Like that's fucking mad, but it's oh, yeah. so hard to write. I couldn't write. I can't write to it. I still got it there, and I want to do it. Mm. But there was another one that he was showing us um, in Surface. In Surface, yeah, yeah, the beat, yeah. That's it's more like a. Uh, it's way more hip hop. He made one, it yeah. as like a gr- yeah, as like a kind of like. London grime. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so mad. It was, it was, it was <laughs> yeah. a good beat too. I told him to send it to me. I'll mm. remind him. Was, I told, yeah, was, and then, yeah, I'll, I could fucking that that collab, the three views. I'd love to see that. 
Yeah, that that man, gonna- man, James pops out music from nowhere and does like two hours or whatever in the studio, comes back and shows me this incredible song that he's made. I'm like, mm. how the heck? But like they just don't go – like he just he doesn't put them anywhere or whatever. He sends mm. it to his mates and stuff like that. But like that man can make some – Amazing oh, yeah. tunes very quickly. He yeah. should he should we, put a start, you know, putting them no, out no, more. Like me and him have been talking and mm. we're, we're going to, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm helping him sort of get the old idea about the Spotify things going. And yeah, then fuck then we're yeah. Gonna, <laughs> so this year, yeah, it, it's going to happen 100%. Even what I was telling James, I want to go to the studio and just do covers. Mm. We're like, we just have a camera and we just sit That'd there. That'd be dope, and bro. Him, him on the guitar, you spitting some bars, and I'll just put some drums over it. Like, just yeah, that's real, mad. real fucking <laughs> Let's do out. that. Yeah. Let's do that. So, that, that that's going to be sick. Um, and then, what the fuck what else did I ask? Um, oh, my last question. Okay, yep. <laughs> Was Michael Jackson actually a pedo? <laughs> because Chloe says to he, she just wants our thoughts on it all. Look, man, I don't think he was, man. I don't know. Um, uh, I think he had a bit of a fucked up upbringing, but I think he had that problem where he was, he had the brain of a 12 year old, but he was just a grown man. I don't mm-hmm. think, I don't know, man. But then apparently people saying that, that he used to pay the parents to let the kids sleep over and shit. But I, I don't think he was doing anything, man. He was like a kid. You, like, I don't know enough about yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was about to say, like, <laughs> like it's I don't want to, like, very spread weird, dirt on a dead man's it's name. Like, very, I don't, I mean, you, you, we don't really know, do we? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's hard to tell. The whole thing, I don't know, since he turned white, things got weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Lydia, just, Lydia says, I love MJ, but I just think he was mentally ill. He lost his mind at some stage. I agree. I, I think he was mentally a bit. Bredo says, fuck oath was always weird, but I think it had to do with the upbringing. <laughs> I think um, child fame really does things yeah, to people. Yeah, yeah. Like, he obviously yeah. had a bad upbringing, but then, like, getting that famous as a child just completely distorts reality. Because you're, you're not, like, even, your brain's not even fully developed yet. No. And you've just got all this fame, all this money. Like, mm. well, even Justin Bieber went through, like, obviously, he's yeah, a little he, bit he more went, stable, but he yeah, went, he went a bit mental, rails, like, yeah. because you just, when you're 13 and the whole world, like, at 13, you think the whole world revolves around you. Yeah. But and then when it learn, actually does. <laughs> you learn that it doesn't. Yeah. But then when it actually does yeah. and you're worshipped at that age, like, yeah. you just think, like, you, the shit would be so skewed. Celebrity like, worship is a fucking other problem, man. You losers who stand outside the airport screaming at fucking One Direction <laughs> walking past. So get a sad. grip, man. Get a fucking grip. When you watch documentaries, <laughs> like Amy Winehouse's documentary or, um, like, Britney Spears, just all these different documentaries on these celebrities and they can't even walk out their door without hundreds of thousands of people and like the photos and like the flashing and like the yelling and it's just mental. Remember watching like the Lady Gaga one and she's walking out of her door and there's this like child, like, I don't know, this weird looking child just standing there and and it like, they like made her voice like louder or whatever, but she's going, mommy, mommy. Mommy, like to Lady to fuck? Lady Gaga, oh, just this little girl, and she's standing there, and it's like that's creepy yeah, that's and it. weird. And then like, yeah. there's all these other teenagers screaming and older yeah. people screaming. It's like, man, get a fucking. You life. know, a lot of celebrities want to move to Australia because yeah, we're a lot laid to, back. Yeah, about yeah, it. we're not as. Just before we move on, yeah, Nero, I'm Team Neros. He says, "Fuck no." ZX says, "Yes." Apparently, multiple people have come out saying what he did to them. I don't know. I I, I still don't think he did it. I feel like but people would say that because they want to money like, and, mm, and I don't think and, he yeah. deep know, down I don't think he was but I feel like there's a lot more going on that nobody yeah, really understands. Scene. But anyway, speaking um, on the Amy Winehouse shit, that shit was fucking sad. But like like we we're talking before off air, I think a lot of the time too is that people who are so good example with music and stuff, a lot of them probably aren't mentally like, you know, stable, but they use the music to help channel their emotions and their feelings but then in Amy, in Amy's Amy Winehouse's case she just fucking blew up like beyond purport bro it was that rehab song eh mm. they released rehab make me go to rehab bro and literally it was like overnight yeah and crazy, bro there yeah, was like- paparazzi at the house bro like imagine coming that shit would make me pass out I opened the door and there's just a fucking poof, yeah. Like light and she like, just Holy. never wanted it. She yeah. never wanted it. And like, even James said that when we we're watching, he's like, "Fuck, I didn't realize how famous she actually was." Because like, even like at the Oscars, she won Oscars and shit like yeah. that. And like, yeah. but just so lost. And like, I honestly see it from the 
it, like she had daddy issues hard because her dad yeah. is some sick fuck yeah. that just like leached off her for his life. But like even like the way that he treated her and the shit that he did, like how he took the whole entire camera crew to the, follow her to a like island where she was just trying to get away from everyone and stuff. But she still has a tattoo on her arm that's like says daddy's girl. And like all the men in her life like got to her and all this kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like full daddy issues. But like obviously, yeah, she was not ready for the fame. But like living that famous life as a celebrity, like no thank you. No, man. Like no no. thank you, man. Like like Tupac always said, man, he wants to fuck the fuck the fame, just give him the money, bro. Like you know what I mean? It's not it's it's uh, I, I, I don't know. It's very, it's very fucking sad because, again, such a good talent, bro. And she was a, bro, she was, at heart, she was a jazz singer. Mm. Like, that was her original thing. And it just, the, the fame took her away from that, bro. Like, she was, man. And sad because the world doesn't have that. Like, yeah, no, nah, yeah. It's, it's really rare. Like, that's what the, I keep forgetting or not knowing his name, but the guy that she sung with, he's like the jazz king, is like heaps old now, he's got dementia and shit like that. But oh, he yeah. sings with Lady, um, what's his name? Lady Gaga's always with him. Like, she, Lady Gaga's like his number one bloody fan. But Tony, Tony Bennett? Tony. Tony Bennett. Yeah, Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Yeah, Tony. he's one of the craziest jazz like singers ever. Yeah, but yeah. he said like, you know, when he was talking about her after she passed, he said, if I could have said anything to her, it would have been to slow down because yeah. we the world doesn't have jazz like that anymore and she was like kind of this born like jazz soul that could have just provided the world that you know what i mean but she was also not she was not there to provide she just she should never have been a show person like just twist people man i have no idea how people live in that fame but then there's people that thrive in it like lady gaga thrives in it she's together put together like there's so many people in that realm that have family, have kids, they keep their shit together. Like, yeah. but it would take a lot of mental strength, mm-hmm. like a lot of mental strength. It's a different ball game living like that. <laughs> yeah, you got to learn to live that way. Yeah, that was that was so sad, and that like yeah, that was overnight too. That's why I feel like for us it's okay. We're like sort of gradually on this like little uphill slope, mm. just slowly, slowly. But even imagine like, right now because Avicii, the same thing happened. Same one thing. song, like imagine if you just dropped one song and it went crazy, and then next thing oh. you know, like 2022, you fucking like taking tours around the world and <laughs> oh. shit like that. You got people like yeah. it would like be that would It'd feel be crazy. immediate. It'd be crazy. I think It'd fame be. is quite immediate for a lot of people. To be honest, like you might get like a small fan base or whatever, but like f- a level of fame just kind of would happen so quickly. I don't think yeah. the human. I don't think the human brain's ever really ready for it. <laughs> mm, no, nah. superstardom. Yeah, yeah. It happened to Post Malone. Apparently, he released White Iverson, and the next day he was like rich. <laughs> I love Post Malone. Like, you know what I mean? Post Malone's cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's cool. Dude. I remember when I first watched. Like, I didn't know his music, but I'd seen a video on YouTube of him, and I was like, "Who the fuck <laughs> is this? Like, white boy with like cornrows dancing yeah. in a field, or like just rapping yeah. in a field or something?" And then now I'm like, "Post Malone." Yeah. <laughs> He looks like he stinks. <laughs> That's what Chloe told me once. I was going to stop laughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to wrap it up there. Um, first episode of the year. Thank you, Sally, for coming on. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you for actually offering to be the first person. It was like, <laughs> I'm coming on. We're doing it again. I was like, yeah, mad. It makes bro. it easier. <laughs> so fun, bro. It's so know. fun. Such yeah. a like, different little world mm-hmm. when you're just like talking mm-hmm. with the audio, with the headphones. Mm-hmm. But- um, I'm sure you'll come back on. Mm-hmm. Many times, as uh, we just keep doing these things, and as the world changes around the um changes around us, um, so yeah, thank you guys. I think that's episode what twenty one. Yes, sir. I want to end it on one one quote that I uploaded last night. I'm gonna read it out for all you sad sacks out there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, stop waiting for somebody to elevate your game. You are already equipped with everything you need to manifest your own greatness. Joe! That was nice. Cool. Thanks, guys. (laughs) That was lovely.